Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about Scott Porter's unboxing series for X. <coughs> sorry, Ten of Swords. We're going to be answering a ton of listener questions. So uh, let's crack into episode 418. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do Six I people it? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hey Google, back somewhere. Let the captain in because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. That's not just Hero Clicks, that is freaking everything uh and also stay on top of all those like random dog days of summer and sales and stuff they're doing but anyways joining me in the studio like always is my co-host your hero clicks champion simeon bruce what's going on simeon yeah they refer to him as glizzies now i've been told by the the cool right. kids no cap oh dogs, dogs. i get oh yeah they're not dogs i anymore. got they're, you that's what we're they're glizzies which Dude, just makes we're me like think a year of, like, snap bracelets and glow sticks what are you doing? Some this weird combo of that? Is that what a glizzy is? It's physical pain. Um, thank you for reminding me how old you are, Simi. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was good. Yes. Good humor. Uh, that was pretty would, based in red pill with you in, today. in Roman numerals, but uh, it's a little too spicy for some people. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay. Simi, what made you happy this week, my man? Uh, I'm referring only, I'm not, no longer using... Uh, what are they? Arabic numerals. I'm only using Roman numerals now. Right. No longer, yeah. No longer going by the the one twos and threes. I will like be like, uh, can I get one or no, no? I already messed up. Can I get <laughs> IV hot dog, please? Ah, uh, yeah. IV glizzy, please. Can I get IV glizzies? Oh, you want <laughs> this guy wants four whole glizzies. What is he? Some sort of glizzy eating champion? You're the like, fastest oh, glizzy no, shooter I'm, in the West. I'm just a simple man with a simple appetite. No need for pictures. and You do not have a simple appetite. I've seen you wolf down incredible amounts of food. That's true. Once spent yeah. $60 on myself at a Texas roadhouse, but it was uh, <laughs> sponsored by my job at the time, so they, were, they paid go. for it. They actually did cover it. I didn't think they would. Oh, nice. Sorry, nice. listener. What made me happy this week was not. A sixty dollar meal at Texas Roadhouse. Uh, sadly, man, there's better steak places. There really are. Pretty much any steak place, uh, even your own home, sometimes um, is better than Texas. Depends Roadhouse. where you're buying it, but yeah. yeah. But uh, what made me happy this week was I got I got some yard work done. I killed a bunch of ants. Oh, I'm tired of these ants. Uh, I was mowing, so we had a hailstorm, knocked all these leaves down, had to rake and then mow, and then at one point I just gave up and started mowing over the piles of leaves. Uh, uh, my, old, my old push mower was like really struggling, but managed to get through it. Um, in doing so, I found like some ginormous ant hills in my the middle of my yard, and uh, so I murderized them with like raid and stuff. And uh, my grass is all dead. Yes, it's, it's great. But also the ants. So that's the main thing. I was just gonna like do the old gasoline match trick, but uh, mm. my neighbors might report me. Um, but I got a lot of yard work done. Uh, I had a decent long weekend to rest and recuperate. I have a new guy at my work. So finally, I mean, three-ish, four-ish months from now, we'll probably have a competent worker that can sh like sh take a share of the load, which is cool. That's something that we haven't had in a while. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. Pretty simple stuff. New person at work, destroying my own lawn in order to fight back against the ants. Mm, okay okay glad glad that's fun uh you're recreating like ant bully the classic movie ant bully if anyone's oh. seen it i was um, thinking like uh bugs life where the, oh bugs the, life oh yeah, sure i guess the grasshoppers that would, are like, would be a... give us all the whatever food they're collecting seeds <laughs> seeds i don't know 
dude, I don't know. Bugs Life came out like twenty five years ago. Oh, whoa, 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 ninety something. XXV years ago, you mean? Oh, sorry, XXV years ago. How dude, Bugs Life. You? <laughs> Anyways, glad that made you happy this week. It's always good to have like a good, uh, productive week like that. On the on the flip end of talking about productive week, uh, I hit level twenty five on uh, Evil Dead the game for my Warrior and Hunter Ash this week. Is um, that on the PSIV? Yes, correct. PSIV, not a PSV. I don't own a PSV yet. Um, although I did own a PSV. Ha! Huh, a few. Such <laughs> a bad joke. Um, but yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you, anyone's playing the Evil Dead the game, I'm playing it with actually. Uh, Charles right now, you know Charles Simeon. Yeah. Uh I've also played it with Matt young, Reed, young master supporter Hitler. of the show. Um my little brother even bought it and he's like a solid, like okay Evil Dead fan, but he's like, This is actually just a good game. Um and it is. And for only forty bucks, uh the experience is mostly online, but seriously, uh Simeon, you should buy it. I'd love to play it with you, dude. Uh, I'd love to play it with like any anybody, honestly, any one of the Hero Clicks community guys. Talking to you, that's right, you listener. You're not the watcher anymore. You're the listener now. Sorry, there's no cool uh, Marvel character, DC character, but maybe there is. Anyways, uh, but if you are playing Evil Dead the game, it's got crossplay enabled. So definitely not whatever that. your system is. Uh, oh yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, 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 jeez. Yes, Simeon. She's most certainly not the listener. Gosh, bro, that's. But anyways, yeah, Evil Dead the game. Uh, I'm also like level 15 on Leader Ash right now, and I'm really enjoying the Leader um, class a lot. I want to branch out besides just playing Ash version um, of each class, but so far he's just like the best in each one besides support, and I'll be darned if I'm ever playing a support class in like any video game. That ain't for me. Warrior and Hunter all day long. I've been enjoying Leader a lot. Haven't played as Demon yet. I might start doing that because the wait times are way faster for Demon, I've been hearing. Um, but yeah, like every YouTube video I've been watching, like on my free time, you know, when you eat breakfast or whatever, it has been like an Evil Dead gameplay video, seeing how other people play, how people do like their stat trees. I have uh, completely let Evil Dead the game like dominate my life, and I'm okay with it because it's a freaking awesome game. And I, I love playing it. It's so good. But anyways, that's made me happy this week. Um... But what probably made a lot of you guys happy this week is in the news. That's right. Scott Porter had an unboxing this week. Man, it's hard to tell anymore because on Monday, it used to be like Monday, 9 a.m. Oh, he didn't upload. No unboxing this week. And now it's like uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it was like Scott Porter hits you. p.m. Ah, stop. Um, and that's been the case for the last few Scott Porter unboxings. They've just like went up anytime on Monday. So now it's like, you never know. Well, we know it's going to be like another two months if we ever see Porter unboxing, obviously, but, um, just kind of happens. And then it's like nine o'clock the rest of the time. Well, for me, for our time zone, yeah, for central anyways. Days um, two through five were all exactly nine on the dot. Cause yeah, days I, I through I, I, I were <laughs> Be good. Or I I through V. Yeah. yeah. I I through V. Yeah. I I through V. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah assuming yeah. you're not counting uh Sunday as the I day. Otherwise it's that's all I guess up. not. We would count it as day I, which would be Monday. Yeah. Gosh. Um <laughs> but yeah, so for each we didn't like choose figures from each video. We're just gonna talk about a figure from each rarity that we think is really cool. Um yeah, we'll and then we can discuss a, a our full thoughts set review, on the set. Obviously. Yeah, like, the full set hasn't been nearly unboxed. Hopefully, yet. you guys enjoyed the last full set review. In which case, we delved quite a bit into stuff. But Simeon, um, if you want to start us off with of delving, yes. with the commons, yeah, tell us tell us about the common you picked. Yeah, um, and feel free to go into their entire history, birth records. Um, oh yeah, yeah, you know whatever as much information as you want to give us, please. Uh, I can tell you their their birthstone. I believe it is the, the Moonstar birthstone. Oh, uh, hilarious. <laughs> Very funny. No, this is character IX, also known as 009 in the set. That's my last one, I promise. Unless okay. I do it again. Uh, but no, this is Danny Moonstar. Um, 
as Guardian, Mystical, New Mutants, X-Men. I know her mostly from New Mutants. That's like where I've read the stuff. 50 points, X-Men team ability, 6 range, triple lightning bolts. Starts with running shot, 3 clicks of running shot, 3 clicks of incapacitate, 3 clicks of toughness. And I like these cheap, like I liked Skyne, I liked, um, man, I can't remember all of them now. I like these triple in cap pieces that are really cheap. Oh, Medusa. Medusa from the Wonder Woman 80th set was another one. Um, I love being able to in cap and triple target. Uh, for 50 points, Miss Minutes double in cap isn't too bad with a 12 attack. Um, but what makes Danny Moonstar here really interesting, it's not the leap climb super senses on the last two clicks. No, 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 no. It is the rally trait. Once again, returning with that big old rally five, you should be used to it. That was all of uh, Rise and Fall was Rally 5. So uh, this is Mind Control, period, and then free. Remove one of Danny Moonstar's Rally dice and use Mind Control as free, but only to target a character she hit with an attack this turn. So if you triple in cap while you have a Rally die, and again, Rally 5 would be an opponent's roll has a 5 in it, uh, a blue rally is friendly and then green is either but for rally five that means your opponent probably rolled good against you sadly um but no it's triple target in cap triple target mind control and then free if you triple target in capped and you already have a rally die you can then also target a character she hit with the, an attack this turn which in cap cons- is it is an attack so yeah being able to action token and mind control or just Mind control and then mind control. Like, that's also the option. Uh, I really like this character. I love mind control pieces in general. I love turning the tables on my opponent by, like, using their characters against them. Um, I love how when I have a character that's only got, like, two damage, as in her case, for her first three clicks, I can, you know, mind control Emperor Gladiator and make him punch his own Shi'ar guard or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, no, it's... (laughs) Just classic, uh, classic fun mind control stuff. You know, triple target, always good. And for so, a common, I like it. Kind of a cool sculpt. For a common, this, yeah. This is like a sculpt I could easily reuse for like D and D campaigns. Just got. I actually really dig stuff. Uh, a lot of like the common uncommon sculpts. There's some standing around there, but like for the most part, I like a lot of them. A lot of bow and arrows. I just realized green pre also a common. Kind of funny. Uh. The common I picked, um, also 50 points, a big steely boy, uh, Colossus here, armor, Excalibur, X-Force, X-Men. Um, I just kind of like this. This is a different Colossus. So he's like charge, you know, super strength and power and vulnerability top dial. Later on the dial, he goes into defend with some 19 defense stop click with defend on his very last click for four, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then his rally is again, red five. So opposing attack rolls. Um, free, remove one of his rally dice to use support as free. You know, he's got an 11 and 10 attack, respectively. So he's like a little charge punch, sure, but then it's, you know, he's gotten power and support. 19 before you do it. Oh, definitely don't. <laughs> Please don't. No. Um, yeah, this is not the kind of defend support we're typically used to. He is very much a defend to actually help you not get hit. Um, not a defend to make it easier for him to hit you. Like, as far as characters that you see where your opponent doesn't want you on the bottom end they don't really want you on the top end either because like yeah. 11 for 3 with empower is kind of bad so if they can hit you to that sweet spot that like click 3 where you're only defending an 18 which is still pretty decent for 50 points yeah um, but otherwise yeah being on that 19 still a 10 for 3 still charge uh that's i don't think x-men have a 19 defend or nope i lied uh, chase beast from empire but oh sure yeah outside of a chase this is a really fun common because of that all yeah. right uh if you hadn't heard x of or sorry oh. sorry 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 ten of swords there you go as uh Good. Good tarot man. cards in the set um and this is the like, i knew we were gonna get a character that did something with tarot cards i just i i knew i thought there might be a character that's like you know ignore your opponent's tarot card this turn or like you know, make them redraw this turn or like something. Uh, but this this character is way better than that. So this is zero two four, uh, thirty point tarot from the X of Swords set, the Ten of Swords set. Uh, four range, triple lightning bolt in cap, 
stealth, whole dial, in cap, whole dial. Special damage power of the whole dial that is shape change, free roll a d6. Tarot can use the corresponding power until your next turn. On a 1 through 3, it's perplex, and on a 4 through 6, it's outwit. So either way, you've got a support power for 30 points. Uh, you've got a rollout for 30 points. You've got stealth, triple target, in cap. Already, like, something I'd play casually for sure. Uh, but what makes this character really crazy is for all characters with this trait, when you would draw a tarot card from your deck, you may instead draw two and choose one to use and <clears throat> put the other one at the bottom of your deck. So if you're running a min-maxed tarot deck and you're competitive, um, she has X-Men and Hellions team or keywords. So X-Men teams for sure. Uh, if you're running a tarot deck and you draw like two out of the five and you're almost, you're not guaranteed, but you have really good chances of pulling a good tarot card that you really want that turn. Uh, but basically doubling your chances every turn. Uh, it's, it's just really good for 30 points. I think it's worth the risk. She doesn't have any defense powers, but I think the two support powers that she can have, the stealth, and then that one trait, I think is all something that, like, obviously X-Men swap is a thing, and I don't see how I would not put her on there, competitively at least. Yeah. Um, and yeah. for casual games, uh, I don't know if I don't know if she fits into that, like, too good like too too good to like especially if i'm running a tarot deck i guess if i'm not running a tarot deck it's all whatever uh she is like still a solid figure but she's not like making anyone mad at me i mean yeah but she uh, i don't know casually it's tough because like it's sh it's so good like if we're saying we're min maxing it you know five card deck and then you get to pull two cards off the top it's just so insanely good but even I don't know. It kind of depends how you build your deck casually, because if it's not built insane, then it's like, yeah, if you've built a casual deck, and then I think it's fine. So, like, play her. Maybe don't play her on swap or whatever. But um, she is so good. She she is, I think, the one of the most used figures in this set. Like, period. Yeah, just how, like, with, the unique, with cards. not unique. The uncommon Magneto and uncommon Professor X. In, uh, right. X Rise and Fall, yeah. Yeah. They were probably like the two most necessary if you don't get anything else from this set other than tarot cards you should also get this figure even like yeah. unthemed yeah. teams i mean like you know if you're running an unthemed team 30 points isn't a lot and you really want those counters you really want those boosts uh we're not going to get too into tarot cards in this episode but at some point we will have to tackle all 78 of them i don't know what that is oh. general, so i can't say it but i Otherwise, I might. Right, because he goes into, like, M's and stuff later. I don't even yeah, know. Like Anyways. All the letters, B, C, <laughs> um, something. My uncommon I'm going to talk about is Danger Room Sebastian Shaw. Uh, I guess I just, like, 19 defenses on a four-click figure because yeah, I'm realizing him and Colossus. He that, is, last, that last click is funny. so good, and he's going to end up on it more often than not. Right. That's I, I really feel like is. if you play against him, you should probably just ignore him and be like, that's a 30 points I don't get. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so, like, what, is, what does he look like? Uh, so, top dial, he's, he's, like, bad. You know, he's a 6 speed leap climb, 9 attack, super strength, 16 defense with willpower and 2 damage enhancement. But he ramps up all the way to his end dial, which is 4 clicks. You get 12 speed charge, 11 attack, super strength, 19 defense toughness, and then 4 damage with close combat experts. So, he's going to be a 12 for 5. Um, obviously he's a danger room, so he's got the whole danger room construct ability, uh, for those that know, you know, but if not, uh, when he makes an attack, after resolutions, you get an error token for each one in the attack roll. If he has two or less error tokens, characters take a maximum of one damage from his attacks, and he takes a maximum of one damage from opponent's attacks, and he can't be healed or chosen for master online, protected pulse wave, so basically, as long as he has no error, two or or less air tokens on his card, he takes a max of one damage, so you've got to hit him four times to yeah. kill him, and that's only for 30 just, points. Just nuts. Yeah. How many times it, have you had all three air tokens on a Danger Room? Oh, well, how many times have you played Danger Room figures called? Danger? Oh, I mean, probably like three times. Once in a Battle Royale, and then like I actually probably built a team with them twice. Not a lot. I don't. I've, I didn't I've play them. I wasn't a big Danger Room guy. Quite a bit, like mostly on robot squads. Sure. Um, so have you ever hit all th have you ever gotten all three error tokens no okay i think i ever have yeah i haven't played them a lot though i ever have is with that magneto danger room magneto 
and he ended up on his like pulse wave click and this was back before the rules change back when i could single target pulse wave and i can't remember what the figure was there's some colossal figure and i was like single target pulse waving with magneto and i think he has like a 12 and uh yeah danger rooms are good for a lot of reasons they are so they not are. only do they only take one they can only dish out one so that makes them balance uh they can't be healed or chosen for mastermind which is you know they they can be chosen for mastermind and healed after they get all three arrow tokens uh but they are protected pulse wave um so there are ways around these figures but man that bottom dial some of like the highest stats i've seen on a 30 point figure if you do a yeah. reverse dial game and you don't put this guy on there with a 12 for 5, 19 defense, 12 speed charge. Plus, he's just got underworld team ability. Uh, what's oh, yeah, his, that too. What's his drawback? Oh, his so his lesson from the danger room is when he is KO'd by an opposing character. This game, that character is targeted by... When that character is targeted by an attack, the attacker cannot positively modify their combat value. So like gives- damage. Gives like all a weird that world trait to an opposing character. That Basically, KOs. when they KO him. So, it depends like what your team looks like, I guess, uh, when you build around this person. Probably will have some kind of perplex or RCE or CC or something, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like that is that is a pretty solid one to gain from like taking out Shaw. Yeah. But again, it's, you know, it's one to... Like, I wouldn't say that's as bad as attack. ESD or combat reflexes, which is... Sabretooth and uh, Matt. Pretty meh, yeah. Um, no, he's, I will say, for 30 points, great tie-up piece. Mystique, I'm not going to get into yeah. her dial, but 25 points, amazing tie-up piece. Very like good, yeah, dial. very, very good. They are shorter dials than the previous ones, but, uh, yeah, just throwing this guy in your opponent's face. Uh, he's, like, fairly slow, but he does have leap climb so he, and willpower, so he can just keep removing action get there. tokens. And He'll get there eventually. Yeah. Just and he's got enhancement too. Like he, at the very least, for you. Oh yeah. He's like a thirty-point unkillable enhancement underworld. Boosting, yeah, boosting damage. And if you do decide to hit him for a couple of like couple times, uh, it becomes so a very real like a, threat. An eleven attack for four. I mean, probably also. One, but you know, Bizarro games are like this dude's <laughs> yeah, bread and butter yeah, here. Twelve for five. Oh. I mean, he has to get rid of his. Uh, error tokens, but just having a twelve Rude, attack deal that, any damage. But it's very nice. that hits through all reducers for one for thirty yeah. points is solid. All right. Um. Yeah. You're rare. I will talk about the sword that comes with this specific boy. So oh, good. Uh, good. Yeah. There's. We'll go over the. There's only three swords that Scott pulled, so we'll go over all of them. But I think it's most of the sword bearers. This is zero thirty two. The rare Wolverine. Um. In his brown and yellow fatigues holding the muramasa blade uh so he's five clicks long what a short dial you say 55 points plus five optional trait which you are going to pay for sword bearer all the sword bearers probably at this point optional five point trait i don't see you playing one of them without the sword though yeah I, we haven't seen a ton of them, but I just really doubt it. Like, the swords are kind of good. Some of them are really good. The illusion of choice. Nah, yeah, you are playing a sword. Yeah, so he's basically a 60-point figure. Um, he has improved movement through characters, which is great. He has a 12-speed charge, 12 attack, uh, 18 defense, and 3 damage top dial. So having that 12 top dial is not something that's new to Wolverine. The 12 speed is kind of fast for him. On clicks two through four, he gets exploit. He gets some combat reflexes on clicks three and four, and then he ends with leap climb, regen, and empower. Uh, but his values, more often than not, are around like 11-ish. Um, main thing with this guy, he's got martial artist, he's got mystical, he's got X-Force, he's got X-Men. He's got a trait that is returning from hell over and over again. And I read this comic line, which is really, really fun. It's just, like, really flavorful. When Wolverine would be KO'd by an opposing effect, instead, don't stop turning the dial and keep turning it for the damage taken up to oh. click 12. So if they psychic blast me from click 1 and they deal 6 damage, I go click 1, or from click 1, I go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I end up on click 6, right? 
obviously like if I get hit down to like click five and then they hit me for something really big, I go to like click 11. I don't see a lot of times where he's on click five and someone sinks, what would that be? Uh, two, four, six, seven damage on him when he's on oh, click five. Yeah. I doubt it, but maybe. Uh, but anyhow, don't stop turning the dial from the damage taken up to click 12. Then place him on this card. At the beginning of your turn, if Wolverine is on this card, heal him one click. If click number five is revealed, your opponent places him within five squares of a friendly character. If no other friendly character on the map share a keyword with Wolverine while he is on this card, KO him. Mm. I think I want to play five of these guys at the same time at oh. 60 points. Thank goodness he's unique. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but you so, could play him with like Mark Wolverine and then uh, Fantastic Four Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't dying. Or, uh, Fanta- well, yeah. if he doesn't have Fantastic Four. You need someone else with Fantastic Four. Oh to shoot! That well, one from dying. But no, he is Franklin. I don't know. Uh, what is this yeah. a countdown dial? Like one of the first countdown yeah. dials we've seen. Yeah. Uh, Resurrection Man, famous for this kind of thing. Ra's al Ghul. Very much. Yeah, Immortal Man. I would say yeah. too, Mister Immortal. <laughs> Uh, now, I didn't mention an attack power because he does not have one anywhere on his dial. Uh, he does have leadership top dial, some clicks of exploit, and then one click of empower. But the Muramasa blade, the one that he comes with, is and this is not the one he has to be equipped with starting, but this is one that he does come with. Uh, I think at this point we're going to assume all the blades give blades claws fangs. All the swords give blades claws fangs. That's pretty fair, yes. Uh, but the Muramasa Blade gives Blades Claws Fangs, and then when this character uses it and rolls a 1 through 3, so things you don't want to show up, the hit character can't use defense powers until the beginning of your next turn. I assume this triggers at the same time, so I roll a 3, hit character can't use defense powers, they take a full 3, like ass- assuming they don't have a trait like uh, Multiple Man where they take a max of 2 from damage or something. If they have any kind of reducer or any kind of whatever, they can't use it until the next turn. That gets through stop clicks. That gets through a lot of stuff. Uh, Muramasa Blade should get through stop clicks. It's pretty cool. It's one of my favorite like objects in the MC, or the Marvel canon, I should say. Um, there you go. But, uh, yeah, I just really like this guy. Uh, he is only a rare. I'm assuming I'll pull one if I get like a brick or a case, which I'll probably uh, – I'm not going to lie – at this point, I'm probably getting at least a case of this set, and then I'm going to try and buy in as many times into the uh, organized play as I can. Okay. Okay. Dang, Simeon. Dang, this dude. I need that uh, terror. Yeah. Dude, I, I like this Wolverine a lot, though. He's a really cool Wolverine. I really like his his like special trait with the whole KO clicks and everything. Uh, oh, I love it. Want to charge Pizza Norse characters. Yeah. Because it's sweet. Wolverine's not like they give Wolverine a long dial sometimes, and like Wolverine's not hard to like really, and most storylines not hard to incapacitate. The thing that's hard to do is keep him down if the battle goes on long enough. So like Hulk right. can just like you know punch right through Wolverine's dial, knock him out. But yeah, true. If everyone else is still standing, he's going to come back, and then he's he's coming back. Your opponent gets to place him, but he has leap climb, twelve attack. He's got that blades. He's coming back with the sword. Or maybe just regenning, probably. Yeah, probably, <laughs> you know. Regen. Get him. Maybe he's got a short dial, which is also good because he's got a short dial. Yeah, he's got he regen. Almost get to top. You know, with X Men team. Ability, probably puts him top. on a charge click, which is nice. His worst chance click, but still a charge yeah, click nonetheless. Fifty fifty chance probably. for charge. Yeah, pretty the good. Charge exploit with um, that blade. So. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, I chose this Magneto. Uh, number one, because I really freaking like it. Uh, that's why. 65 points, 6 range, 2 targets. Um, it's got some cool special stuff for standard powers. He has Penetrating Psychic Blast, his entire dial, which I like. Uh, top click, he has 3 clicks of Enhancement. And then down dial, he has 3 clicks of Perplex. Um, but he's got a really cool and kind of like consistent dial with his powers. So improved targeting in Norse characters, a ton of keyword, acolytes, brotherhood, hellfire club, politician, quiet council, ruler, sword, X Men. Um, another sword this Magneto for uh, yeah, another dude, what, sword dude, name? Tyler Hayward Tyler. for Tyler Hayward to yeah. control. <laughs> um, so he's got a really cool trait which will make any Super Scroll player like shiver it's prepared invasion posing characters within range and line of fire using impervious and ignores characters so keep that in mind 
using impervious shape change or super senses, decrease the result of those powers by minus one. Uh, a six is always a success. So that's really good. Uh, it takes it down from like a 50-50 shape change on a scroll to a normal one, or it takes any normal rolls only succeed on a six, which is wild. Yeah. Uh, his special speed power is running shot. When he uses it after resolution, so he can use force blast is free. That's pretty solid. His special defense power I really like is ESD, invulnerability, and this character has safeguard mind control. Thank you. Thank you, WizKids. Finally, we have a... Like, that's why he wears the helmet, is so that way Charles can't mind control him. It's the same reason Juggernaut's got the helmet, and Juggernaut always gets freaking protected mind control or something. Finally, we got a Magneto with safeguard mind control. Thank you. Thank you, WizKids. It's about time... There might be some in the past that have it, but like for the last have five them, years, uh, you haven't had what was, this. What was that weird uh, organized play that they did? X Men Regenesis. Days of Future Past. Oh, Regenesis to be a protected mind control. There did was, he? It was. I think it was one of the LEs had. Okay. Or maybe it was sure. the Cyclops with his helmet. I think oh gosh, was, that's, that's what it was. I think. Uh, yeah. The Cyclops Magneto didn't helmet. get it, but the Cyclops wearing his helmet oh, or something gee. like that. Um, I really want to look. But, no, right now. he's. An 11 for 3 running shot pen blast invulnerability ESD enhancement top dial gets rid of like tracks one from all your rollout rolls. Uh, impervious doesn't affect him, obviously, it'll help other people though, which is really really nice. So that's within six range again, six range line of fire ignores characters. Um, he helps out your team with that and then also with enhancement, which is dope. Uh, later he gets perplexed. I just like this Magneto, he's a cool Magneto, he's got X Men TA as well. Um, he's just dope. I think he's a super fun Magneto, and I can't wait to play him. This is just a really fun and, like, cool, unique dial, too. So I like it. Yeah, so Magneto from the Regenesis set uh, does not have protected mind control. The Cyclops, that is, was, like, one of the LE, the prizes, has Magneto's mental shielding helmets, protected, mind control, <sighs> helmet, penetrating psychic blast. Magneto <sighs> didn't get that trait, but Cyclops wearing mm. his helmet did. Uh, and then what the other Magneto that was an LE... He didn't have a helmet because he has like the big flowing hair. Uh, so yeah, oh right, right. Um, so yeah, cool, cool character. Goodness. Um, yeah. As far as rares go, probably one of the ones I want to pull in like sealed from what we've seen. Uh, penetrating psychic blast with running shot and force blast is free is pretty cool. Um, ending on like force blast perplex. Ending on eleven for four. Honestly, pretty solid. Uh, Next up, we've got Super Rares, and we only saw three of these. So the one I chose is 054 Wolverine slash X23. She, this is Laura Kenny, uh, comes in at 90 points. And for 90 points, man, pretty pretty solid. Uh, I will say the stop click reminds me of like the Tradecraft tokens kind of stop click because it's like that blank dial with a, such a low defense. But it's still good, and I'll I'll tell you why. I guess I guess if you want to drag it out of me, so she starts with a special speed okay. power and ends well, right before her stop click ends with a special speed power. Uh, that is charge stealth. When X twenty three uses charge, if she occupies hindering terrain, she doesn't have speed. So top dial that's a ten speed. Uh, seven click seven is an eight speed. She has eight clicks. Her eighth click is just the stop click and her trait it is not any powers other than that uh she has improved movement through characters she has assassin martial artist weapon x x force and x-men she can go on most of those teams pretty good she has a special attack power that go click one and two click four and then click six and seven again it kind of like symmetrically click seven is where her dial ends click eight is like a special additional click and you should not consider that as far as symmetrical dial stuff is concerned. Uh, okay. So it does make one of those like nice little uh, Christmas tree looking like masks or whatever that like the dials sometimes look like, uh, like with what they did with like Bizarro and stuff like that. Uh, oh anyhow, yeah. Uh, so her special attack power blades expert blades, claws, fangs when X 23 uses it instead of rolling two D six, and choose or instead roll 2d6 and choose one to be the result so when you roll for blades you get to roll both dice 
doubling your chances to roll above what her printed damage values are, which her, the highest her printed damage value is three, so always a good option. Uh, clicks three and clicks five, following up with that uh, very symmetrical coloring pattern. She has flurry blades, combat reflexes, and outwit. She starts with combat reflexes, uh, then goes to super senses, and then the rest of her dial, other than three and four, she has super senses. Uh, her special stop click, that special little click eight that I don't really consider, I don't know, I consider it more of like a trait because like that, that whole click is just like you get off of it so easily. It feels like it's not part of the dial yeah, almost. It is. Because it's like it's, this extra yeah, color, like, yeah. Like, don't look at me kind of thing. Uh, stop. Each time this click is revealed, if X-23 is the only character on your force, KO her. Doesn't give you any defense powers. It's just, if she's the only character on your force, KO her. Uh, mm. So, yeah. she's. It's called unparalleled healing, unless, I guess, she's the only person left fighting. Uh, the reason why this, this uh, stop click and this whole figure is really cool is she has a trait that is at the beginning of your turn you may heal x23 one click at the end of your turn you may heal x23 one click so both you heal one at the beginning and one at the end so if i'm on my stop click and i heal up i now have charge stealth don't have my speed when i'm in hindering and then i've got that blades roll blah 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 roll 2d6 instead of one i've got a 12 yeah. attack i've got outwit i hit someone with mystics and i go back to my stop click end of my turn i go back off of my stop click very cool um i think this is the first time they've given laura a double healing she's definitely healed at the beginning of a turn before but it's a really really fun trait uh, being able to heal essentially two clicks in one turn is kind of nuts. Really counteracts mystics, really counteracts any kind of like feedback damage stuff. Um, and that the name of that trade is I Heal Faster Than Logan, which uh, according to that <clears> Always that taking saw, shots at the old yeah, man, that, that rare Wolverine definitely heals a lot slower. He's only healing one per click. He does have True. a click of regen, but yeah. True. No, it's a fun, it's a fun super rare. Um, I think she's got a place for me, definitely. Assassin's a fun keyword to play around with. Uh, Weapon X, X Force, and X Men are all teams that I've built before, so she's definitely yep. going to make it to one of those. No, uh, dude. I as soon as I saw the dial, I was like, this is a fun and kind of crazy X twenty three. They've been giving X twenty three some awesome dials. Her um, Weapon Hex dial was insane. This is really crazy. Uh, the one in XXS was solid and like fun in its own way. Uh, this dial is just like, like it's it's so dope. Like I could see this on some tables, dude. Like she's oh, fun, yeah. uh, and she's not unique. So ooh. you can have a bunch of them, uh, not getting KO'd because uh, the <laughs> True. stop click dude. Was revealed. Oh, a full team of her or like some, with an X Men taxi. Ugh, gross. Uh, the person I am going to be talking about here is Deadpool. Uh, as far as super rares went, it was between him and Bay. The, yeah, I'm not going to talk about Bay. Bay of the Blood Moon. It was uh, not Bay. Yeah, not for me. Uh, the only she didn't person quite seduce like, her. You. <laughs> that's, that's the equipment she comes with. Oh, it's hilarious. No. Um, so <laughs> talking about Deadpool, uh, four clicks long. The dude's wild. It's Forty points. Got five range. The dolphins. Beatable. Uh, team player, she's a wild card. Uh, Deadpool cores, pirate, weapon X, X Men. This is the uh, pool party floaty Deadpool that we saw. So um, his trait, he's kind of wild, dude. Floaties for everybody uh, or everyone. Adjacent friendly characters have the dolphin movement yeah, symbols. He was just... handing out cake, and I guess they waited long enough that now he can hand out floaties and everyone can go Bro, back to the pool. Oh after, gosh, that's hilarious, dude. This is like a classic, like. I think they're just writing a dead third dead grader dead. birthday party where it's like we're gonna have a birthday party and it's at like the public pool and we're gonna get some cake and we're gonna go swimming um i feel like every kid try not to cramp up timmy yeah don't cramp up i feel like this is every suburban kid's like birthday party at one point in his life for sure um yeah he gives everybody dolphin symbol it's adjacent and then he has another trait, which is my healing factor is mostly battling sunburn. At the end of your turn, you can heal him a click. So again, not as good of healing as uh, Laura either. Uh, and then his special speed power for his first two clicks is amazing teleport, free, generate up to four water terrain markers in squares within range and line of fire. Your turn, 
even if lost, remove them. Uh, that's pretty wild. Uh, so now he not only gives an adjacent friendly characters dolphin symbol, he also makes water for free. That's, so you plop one a under lot of him. Terrain for free, like ah, uh, I thought dude. Molecule Man made a lot of terrain for free, and he still does. But like this is. Four isn't crazy. Thing. Come on. Four is not crazy, but it is guaranteed water, and it is also guaranteeing that you and three other friends cannot be seen within four squares yeah, of an opposing. That's like, that's wild. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's really crazy. Is he's I mean, got this built in super stealth. For four. So points, even people that ignore stealth, like, you gotta get close to you. As crazy as Molecule Man, because Molecule Man can put down potentially, like, uh, I don't know, like, ten barriers. Seven, ten, a turn. Yeah, ten barriers. He wants to, if it all goes uh, well. But you could play both of them off team. Oh and, gosh, uh, you could. Jason you could. The, you can give Dolphin to Molecule Man. Molecule Man mm. can drop down some smoke that turns into water. Deadpool can drop down some water. Water. You got a big old pool. Big wet map here. Yeah. You have to dry it oh, off. He's, um, he's cool. He's he's also got cool. Full Dial of Perplex. He's also got like Quake. 18 super senses yeah, no down dial if he doesn't get one shot somehow then you know he's got charge blades combo reflexes on the solid no i he's got team players so you could somehow copy like wonder woman or something if you want oh that um, too have 50 50 super sense top dial it's not like great but like for 40 points ensuring that your opponent has to get within four of you is pretty cool uh We've already talked yeah. about X of Swords, or we sorry, Ten of Swords, for a pretty long time. Dolphin symbol, uh, but I guess, you know, maybe it's better. Yeah, than... we've had a lot of people tell us we'd be sleeping on Dolphin <laughs> symbol. <laughs> I always thought it was um, good. We just, we haven't had a ton of characters that have Dolphin. Yeah. But now yeah. He, he just hands it out like it's candy. Yeah. Um, um, you want to talk about a tarot card, right, really quickly? There's some cool tarot cards that came out. We are a little bit over time for how much I wanted to talk about this set, so we can yeah. ra- go through this pretty quick. I'm going to do a quick rundown of Saturnine, the chase that Scott pulled, though. 150 points, Cosmic Energy, oh, sure. Mystics, um, three clicks of Invincible, three clicks of Toughness, Hold Dial, a Running Shot. There's a bunch of traits. So first is free generate a Captain Britain Corps bystander in a square within six squares in line of fire. That's just free, max three of them. Uh, those guys have, let's see, it's charge. Let me let me double check. Captain Britain Core is charge, blades, 10 attack, 17 defense with toughness, 2 damage. Um, but Saturnine has a little bonus thing. So she's protected outwit. She has cosmic, Excalibur, mystical ruler. She has mastermind traded. When Saturnine uses it, she may instead choose a friendly character with Captain Britain in their name within 6 squares. So you can use those bystanders, which is pretty cool. She has a special attack power on her first two and last two clicks. That is Dragonfire, Penetrating Psychoblast, uh, Improved Targeting Through Characters and Out of Adjacency. Choose an opposing character within range and along a direct line of fire. Make a ranged attack targeting that character and all other characters occupying squares along that line of fire. Instead of normal damage, each hit character is dealt Saturnine's printed damage value, which top dial mm. is four. Uh, she is like eight range. <laughs> Uh, 10 speed running shot so an effective range of 13 pretty cool um then her special damage power her whole dial is omniversal majestrix leadership perplex once per turn you may re-roll a die rolled by a character within range including one die of an attack roll it just says a die so this means you can re-roll somebody's breakaway somebody's willpower someone's leadership you can her own leadership uh, you can re-roll, uh, I don't know, Thanos rolling his uh, his Infinity Gem roll. Make him roll a one. Try to. Is that worth 150 points for six clicks? Maybe. But it's really cool. And I hope this much flavor is on the rest of the chases because it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, quick tarot card. Not tarot card, excuse me. Legacy card. I wanted to discuss here. Uh, Banshee from Deadpool. Um, I love Deadpool. It's one of my favorite sets when it came out back in 2014. They got Banshee here, great, so he was originally... Oh, dude, such a good set. 98, uh, he was, points. 98 points. Yeah, so he was 98 points. We're taking 23 points off, making him 75 points. Uh, it's crazy, because people played the heck out of the Banshee at 98 points. And now I'm looking at the dial, which is... It's even better. So it used to be you couldn't use Super Senses, and then you couldn't... If you had Toughness, Invulnerability, or Invincible, you had... You had or sorry impervious invulnerability or invincible you had toughness instead right that trait is now within six squares you can't in line of fire so it got made out of the line of fire 
can't use super senses and then can't reduce damage by more than one. So it's like a side grade to it, but he has penetrating damage. So yeah, and it also it basically gives them toughness, but it does not give him the ability to penetrating through well, invincible. Basically, if they ha yeah, if they have invincible, it becomes toughness. That's able to reduce kind of. their damage. Yeah, yeah basically, so yes. It's wacky. It's uh, different yeah. than the original, um, rate, but it affects. But I the will same. say. Uh, the Sonic Scream and then his improved targeting are straight-up upgrades. He now constantly ignores elevated hindering and destroys blocking. Uh, before, he didn't have any of that. Uh, he only ignored elevated terrain and hindering. So now he's got improved targeting and ignores blocking. Um, and he only got that when he did a double power action for his special attack power that's on his clicks 2, 3, 4. And now, instead, it's just Pulse Wave... When he uses it, he deals his printed damage value instead of one, which is a three on all those clicks, which is very solid. Um, and now he always destroys blocking. Um, yeah. So straight up upgrades for Cassidy. He's yeah. just got, I would say, same stats. yeah, lower points, same stats. All these upgrades, they did take away X cores and Generation X keywords from him horseman or did he already have horsemen he had horsemen apparently he? Okay. uh he had horsemen of apocalypse and now he just has horsemen oh, yeah. so i guess they horsemen took that keyword away too now. Um, no yeah so x was the first horseman set so if you're building a horseman theme team it doesn't work with um it doesn't work with the old ones yeah uh but it only um, started in x or yeah of x. he still got his eight range he still got flight they gave him indomitable now whoa i'm just messing yeah um <laughs> But yeah. but yeah, so like Banshee, a straight up upgrade from a figure that was really cool. And yet at 75 points, when I just see Super Senses for defense top dial and six clicks, I'm like, dang, how'd I play him at 98 before? Because even now at 75, I'm like, man, he's risky. Well, he was so good. He hit so hard. It was crazy yeah, back then. You you just get him within yeah. range back then and just follow up with what him. Eight years to a, yeah. What eight years does to a sure. guy. Crazy man, it it's wild. The Deadpool set, Arnim Zola, but, um, yeah, oh, dude. Cat, the Prime Cat, the Prime Shang. If, Shang -Chi. if Cat or Shang Shang Chi, Shang -Chi. Uh, got one, one of the top. Who's my favorite? Oh, I've dude, that cable, Shang dude, of all time. One of the best cable sculpts ever is oh, in Deadpool. Yeah, I would love that cable to that get a uh, legacy card. Yes, dude, he was, was so good. Fun story. Oh. the first figure that was ever just gifted to me was that cable. I was like having a conversation when I very first started. Dang, I, dude! I was having a conversation with a guy, um, and I was like, "Yeah, like I, I've been collecting these figures, but I don't like I don't have any of these super rares that you guys keep talking about or like chases or anything." He's like, "You don't have any super rares?" And I was like, "No." And he just like reached into his box and gave me cable, and he's like, "Here." And I like wow, woke up later dude. that night, and it was going for like twenty five, thirty bucks. Yeah, like, he was a spendy Whoa. super rare. I still have that figure though. Oh, um, dude, that's so that's so boss. Out, that was Charlie. really good. You, I, I, he doesn't play anymore, but um, he was all about the capes. And if you, you know, uh, no, this Banshee mine definitely has the little Sonic scream effect broken off. But oh, sure. yeah, this is like one of those figures I just couldn't get rid of because in Golden Age, like every, you never know, you never know when you need that like silver bullet that was just like you never know. Get rid of all your defense stuff. I hate it. I hate your reducers. <laughs> just toughness for everyone. Uh, really cool figure. I'm excited from the two that we've seen. I'm really excited. They've done a really good job. Leech, obviously yeah. one of the most accurate leeches. Oh, I, I hate yeah. to hate on it. It's you know it's a leech sculpt. What's he gonna look like? He's a little kid in a beanie. Uh, but this banshee, one of the best banshee sculpts. One of the best banshees. Period. Uh, not just because he was kind of so like good. busted and good, but also just because it's accurate for the character and a really cool sculpt. And so I'm really glad with how accurate they're going with the uh, the legacy cards in the, the first two that we've seen. Um, now on to to wrap. I'm it very up. excited for Eunice the Untouchable uh, to see how accurate his legacy yeah, card is. That legacy I'm not gonna card. lie, we should, I we should run down. Um, oh yeah, what are what are they, Simeon? What Scott said like the legacy figures were. So it is the Mark II uh, Sentinel from, I believe, giant size X Men. I think. I think they're all giant size X Men. Uh, let me double check. Oh, there's the one Infinity Challenge Magneto. Oh no, I I mean the Colossals. Um, oh, so oh, then yeah, giant size so, X Men. Yeah. The Sentinel Mark II and the Sentinel Mark V. So that's for those of you with Roman numerals, the Sentinel Mark II and the Sentinel Mark V. Yeah. 
Oh, you said uh, you're also done. the Apocalypse, not the Toys R Us variation, but the, what, G003 Apocalypse. Still yeah, make sure you guys get the main set versions of actually right. all of these. These will be the ones the Toys that R Us ones are not the same dial. And, well, most importantly, they're not the same set numbers. They don't right. work. Uh, Fabio yeah. Cortez from the Dark Phoenix set, which has not yet rotated. So that one is still technically, um, yeah, a thing. Uh, let's see. That was one. The I think it was Infinity Challenge, Veteran Magneto, which should be the Red uh, Skull yes. Magneto. Uh, he is a eight click long, mostly TK leadership energy shield. I feel like he's going to be another one of those ones where they just give him a big block of text that does some fun stuff. Um, who knows? Uh, there was a forge from one of the older sets. Dude, I was so bummed. When he said Unique Forge, I was like, yes! Uncanny, or not Uncanny, uh, Wolverine and the X-Men Forge, let's go! Yeah, and then it was that is a good one. Mutations and Monsters or whatever. Yeah, it is uh, Sinister. Sinister. The unique Forge from Sinister, I believe. Um, Warlock from Wolverine and the X-Men, which... That is what I'm actually the most excited about. I really liked that few, Warlock. One of the few super rares from that set I do not own, so... Oh, it's Simeon. Sad. Real sad. I've always wanted one. I just end. never picked it up. Um, Warlock is such a fun character, too. Oh, he is. And he had the Doom like, Buggy. He's, crate, which he's was hilarious. Really the Doom cool. Buggy was so funny. Um, and it's such a wacky dial. And I can't wait for it to be not 164 points. So that's that's what I'm most excited. A apocalypse. There is one that he didn't have that he mentioned. Uh, Fabian Cortez. Warlock. Forge. Magneto. Uh, obviously cannonball and leech or not cannibal um obviously banshee and leech right um, i can't remember the last one but it doesn't really matter if you have them you have them at this point people have scalped you know all the like ones that are out in the open and were Correct. sold for sadly out. true so, yes yeah, the price is already <laughs> i would say doubled or tripled but that's not the truth that banshee went from maybe 5 to 10 dollars to now people are asking like 75 um, overnight and Fabian Cortez, who knows what people are asking for that unique uncommon, just like the unique uncommon leech. But man, people have high hopes. I will say, I luckily have all of the Sentinels. Uh, they're just these were like really cool looking Sentinels. The Mark II is the one that's blasting Wolverine, and then the other, the Mark V Sentinel is the one that's also blasting Wolverine. I think, but with its like frost vision. Uh, but that's the legacy stuff. Mm. Uh, very cool set for legacies. Uh, I'm glad that they're like picking and choosing from like random different sets that actually make sense. I'm glad they're really digging into like the two by twos. That gives me hope because over time I've collected pretty much every two by two I could, just because I love like the giant sculpts. Uh, but let's get into yeah. the. The tarot cards that we did not see before that Scott pulled or showed off. He didn't necessarily pull these, but he showed them off. Um, first up, in no particular order, is Ten of Wands. Wands, of course, being uh, the damage powers. So the first time each turn perplex is used, the chosen combat value is modified by plus two, minus two, instead of plus one, minus one. Very simple, very effective, very cool. Uh, just easy thing to put into play. If your opponent is playing Perplex, well, maybe you don't want this one in play. Maybe you use 30-point Tarot to skip this card. Uh, next up is a Major Arcana, the Temperance card. When a standard character successfully breaks away, that character's controller gains one mission point, maximum three per turn. This is kind of nuts. Uh, if you play this card with a mission point team... Being able to get, I mean, obviously you won't be able to draw this card back to back, but being able to get an additional potentially three mission points on a team that's already going for mission points is pretty good for zero points. I don't know. I haven't I haven't play tested with these too much. Obviously, the ones I'm reading off, not at all, but that one specifically caught my eye. Uh, King of Swords, which is the attack power, because swords are for attacking. Uh, when a character hits with an attack roll of doubles after resolutions, remove an action token from them, which is just a fun little flavorful throw thing to throw out there. Maybe you hit with a double, maybe you don't. Um, next up is Queen of Swords. Yeah. When a character hits, or when a character attacks, its rolls of 10 to 11 are critical hits. 
we've had a lot of things that do have done this over time, uh, but we've never had anything that did it for free. So this is pretty cool. Again, this applies for your opponent and you. So do you want this on the battlefield or not? Like hard to say. Hard to say. Uh, I think in a casual setting, all of these are really fun. Like the mission point one probably won't. Yeah, I I off, really but... like the mission point one though. <laughs> I'm just happy that like tarot cards is integrating a mechanic oh, that I also really point, like. Yeah. Tarot mission if point was, is so I'm glad funny, it's that, dude. And not just like this turn, all mission points gained are doubled. Like <laughs> that would be <laughs> ab- would like, actually insane. Everybody, um, buy, buy, buy. <laughs> like yeah, buy it, buy it, buy mission it. Points. Dude, um, dude, invest in Ultron. Yeah. One hit attack with Ultron, bro, is twelve mission points in one turn. Dude, yeah. Could you imagine? It'd be insane. Uh, six of Pentacles, Pentacles. Uh, that is the speed power. When a character uses mind control after resolutions, they may deal their printed damage value divided between all hit targets. So this is like Exodus, but attached to everyone potentially even exodus just doing this twice which would be nuts i don't know if that's how that works but man if you dish out eight damage to one character with exodus with this card on the map that's crazy uh again this is after resolutions this is not coming from an attack an attack so just like exodus this gets through stop clicks potentially because it's just dealing the printed damage uh this gets through uh, they don't get to roll super senses on this particular part. They get to roll it on like the mind control. They don't get to roll shape change except on the mind control. Um, impervious, they don't get to roll at all because you're not dealing damage from an attack. It's being dealt after resolutions from this card. A uh, lot of stuff. Just This just wipes right through it, and that's really cool. It was really cool with the, when the 95-point Exodus did it, and now that uh, this is like... I will say there's a lot of cards that basically make the legacy thanos unplayable this is one of those cards that makes him super good if you drop this card and he free mind controls you and then deals his printed damage that's really really nasty uh next up ace of pentacles when a character uses flurry and misses one or both attacks so you hit one or hit zero after resolutions you can make a close attack so basically it gives you a triple flurry if you miss one or if you miss two, like you get a third chance. That's pretty cool. Uh, not a bad option at all. And it is uh, when a character uses flurry. So if you're running a team that's a bunch of charge flurries, if you're running like several, I don't know, uh, like X-23s or something with charge, like flurry kind of stuff, then yeah, you get to reroll a whole bunch of things. That's all the ones that Scott showed us that were new. Obviously, we'll go over the rest at a later point but it doesn't really make sense to go over too many of them until we have the full set list. Uh, Two objects that we didn't go over, the Seducer. All the objects are 10 points with 5-point traits for the Sword Bearers. The Seducer comes with Bay the Blood Moon, and it's more of like a spear-looking thing. It it gives you Blades, Claws, Fangs. When this character uses it, after resolutions, this character may use Mind Control as free, but only to target a hit character. Very cool. And then... The other one was the Mercy Blade. So this is Blades, Claws, Fangs. Once per turn, when this character is attacked, you may reroll the attack, which is not prob. It's just rerolling an attack. Very cool. Um, if that is not like an ability that's attached to the attack power that just gives you that for free, kind of, which is pretty crazy. And that, that sword comes with Iska the Unbeaten. So, yeah. Two very good swords. Uh, I mean, three really good swords. Obviously, like, I'm partial to the Muramasa Blade. Mercy is very interesting because it just gives you a non-prob prob with equipping it. So, very good sword to also have. But, yeah, that is X of Swords so far. Awesome. Uh, to get through the rest of news here, these are kind of like some smaller things. But, as you guys know, Heroes came out in 2002. 2022 it's turning 20 years old this year i think we mentioned that a few times um but whiskey has a 20 percent off all hero products on their web store right now not going to talk about it crazy but there's some neat stuff on there if you want to check it out uh however fun stuff for us in the like realm of news we have 901 subscribers on the youtube yeah. channel so we've hit the 900 subscriber mark we are going to be giving away and we're going to make a video specifically for that uh 
a handful also, of things for 900 subscribers, it's and been then catching more traction the higher we go. It, it has a it's been long doing good. slog to like 800, and then it was a long slog to 900. It was like two months, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been going faster. Like each so, each milestone. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm really liking it a lot. So if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Because then, uh, yeah, uh, but if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe because we're gonna be doing a great giveaway at a thousand. Uh, but for 900, uh, I will say this we're gonna be giving away, uh, I believe, we want to give away the starter set watcher at the very least. We're gonna add some other cool stuff to that, we'll maybe some of our like, custom yeah, tokens. If people are um, interested in the watcher, we could give away yeah. a couple of those, um, right? I could even toss in like one of the super rare watchers that I pulled. Although, oh, like, sure, yeah. It's a completely different version. Very cool. Right, still. totally different watcher. Uh, yeah. Still cool, though. But, yeah, we're, we'll are we make a YouTube video telling you all about, like, the 900-person giveaway. To qualify for that, it's probably just going to be, like, a be subscribed to the channel, like the video, and then comment on the video well, something. We're already, we're already at and 900. Then, we'll probably we're already at 900. 1, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, for 1,000, that's, that's yeah, what sorry, we're already at 900. Rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. So, a lot of X's. No, it's or M's be like... or something. It's a T, maybe R. What, what do they do? Uh, Some weird consonants M. in there. One M. Oh, really? One M. Yeah, when we hit M, we when we get to M, away. yeah. When we hit M, we're doing a giveaway. So the thousand person giveaway. So please subscribe. Uh, we'll make a video about that probably this week, and may make another one. But uh, yeah, please uh, help us get to a thousand. We've already thank you guys so much for your support. Um, typically this, this week when when Scott Porter. Uh, uploads videos um, that absolutely kills any videos we yeah, upload. Yeah. We it absolutely so like normally. In the head. Normally, we, uh, but we this actually week, did get quite a few guys, views on our. You guys Plus shelled unboxing. out. We got like yeah. three hundred ish views for both of our Disney Plus unboxings, and I was very proud of you guys. So, like, yeah, thank you so I really much. Appreciated it. Uh, I really thought that. so. Mine was first, and I really thought Scott Porter Day One was just going to kill any views I got. Um, by the time I went to bed. Which I go to bed early because I am, uh, I can't say it in Roman numerals, but I am old. Um, <laughs> I went to bed with, with, I think, like 30 views, and I was like, man, like I love when Scott gets new products, but man, it just like, it kills like the previous sets, unboxings. Um, I mean, it was like, I'm going to jump off I, the billboard. I woke up to like 200 views. views, and I was like, holy cow. Like, I, I had hoped that it would hit, you know, several hundred. And it, I mean, at this point, I think it's around like yeah. three, but yeah. The fact that people took the time to at least watch like the opening, um, even like my sister who does not watch any of our stuff, uh, liked our post on Facebook and then sent me like oh. a laugh emoji in a text, and I was like, "What?" And she like sent me an image of it, and I was like, "What? Are you laughing at me now?" And she was like, "No, I thought it was funny," and I was like, "Stop laughing at me." Stop. It. Stop. Laughing. <laughs> you got very serious very uh, quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really appreciated it. Calder's unboxing also hit the like 300 viewer mark pretty quick. Um, those two skits that we did, they were a lot of fun. We want to bring more stuff like yeah. that to you guys. Uh, it's just like simple little comedy stuff that adds to like our unboxing. Does it have anything to do with Hero Clicks? Ah, eh, sometimes, yeah. I mean, a little, a little bit. It's yeah. there. I'm In not essence. actively like angry With flavors and that, uh, turns people into uh common hating that's just what he controlled says controlled characters but uh, abusive domestic relationship semi abuse <laughs> yeah He's, i haven't played i haven't played a common figure in five years <laughs> not since the prince format came out not since the prince format came out but no yeah please uh, i want to play the cool. full shifting focus captain america two of them are uncommon and commons please uh anyway yeah no <laughs> it's, it's very J. fun x away like how dare you <laughs> no, grab a prime? No, he's a prime. He's a prime, though. I promise. He's worth money. He's worth like $4. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for all the subs. And keep them, keep them rolling. We do super appreciate it. We're glad that you're enjoying our content. Um, before we get into community questions, I'm going to do a few more plugs. I already did a big plug for the YouTube. I'm going to do a little plug for the Patreon. Uh, we also want to show your support. And we love our relationship with our Patreon members. You know, I like game with them hang out with them we have awesome talks and stuff in general and yeah. just in all the like times where we're just discord and stuff talking not just chatting with them yeah 
whatever. So if you want to get in on that, you can join the Patreon family for as little as a dollar a month just to hang out with us in Discord, play some Bad Samaritan from time to time, get entered into, you know, giveaways every month. Or if you want to donate a little bit more, you know, 5, 10, 15, 25, whatever bucks a month, whatever you feel comfortable with, obviously. Um, we have action tokens and we have really fun stickers that we give out. So I think our Patreon is an amazing, like, bang for your buck, like, value-wise. If you join, like, $10 a month, you're getting three action tokens a month. That helps me, like, cover the cost of, like, shipping and what it costs to make action tokens. I know it doesn't seem like a ton, but if you're just being like, you know what? I want to give these guys money to help them out. And then also on top of that, I get really cool stuff. That's awesome. For only an extra five bucks, you get six tokens a month, which I think is great. 25, you can get yourself a t-shirt. It's like a one-time t-shirt. And then, like, every once in a while, if we get a new design, we'll also send you a t-shirt. Um, but then that's another six tokens a month, stickers every month. Like, there's just great value in the Patreon, and it's super fun. So please consider doing that, helping support us. That's what is, like, been able to fund, like, some green screen stuff, some better mics, some better lights. We, uh, we put all that money right back into the podcast, into the channel. So we super and appreciate that, guys. Back into, like, the Patreon members themselves with giveaways. Oh, very true. Yeah. yeah, giveaways. Um, yeah. I won't even say we're the best part of the Patreon, like, there's a lot of really cool, fun people in the Patreon. Like, you've got Matt Reed, oh. who literally lifted up a house one-handed one time. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I believe that's true. That's world records. true. Uh, you've got Brad Broyles, who runs, like, the only online tournaments that are still going, I think. Um, like, pretty much it, yeah. The OG Florida man, who knows all Florida facts and also... Uh, does a ton of other Florida things. I've got somebody that lives and survives in um, Michigan, so that's cool. Uh, no, there, there's a ton of people in there. We've got other content. In, creators. around, there. and near Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Very, uh, very impressive. <laughs> yeah, we've got, you know, James down Casey, or not Casey, I guess it's just Kansas. Um, but yeah, and then and then you've got the, the cosplayers for Calder, which is a fun little uh, thing. Look, that yeah. Uh, no, there's there's a ton of uh, people in there. I'm is. not naming, but um, it is it's it's more than just us in there. There's a bunch of fun things that happen constantly. It's sometimes yeah. too much to take. I'd say it's it's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, and then also, if you want to send us questions and stuff, that's on the Discord, which is a part of the Patreon. And then if you want to not have to do that, you can also send them to us on Facebook.com slash Dialage for Hero Clicks. Send them to us on Twitter. You know, dial H4. It's the number four Hero Clicks on Twitter. But all right, guys, we're going to jump into some listener questions. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, people think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. At this rate. Starting on Facebook, Malcolm Rush has a bunch of WV questions. I'm going to try to uh, rattle through these. We can probably do these pretty quick because we have some really in-depth questions that are asked on our Discord that I'd like to get to. Um, so he's asking about WWE questions uh, because WWE is pretty much gone from modern here with the early rotation and everything. Uh, he asked, which powers or ability from the WWE Power and Abilities card do you want WizKids to officially put into regular Hero Clicks powers and abilities and why? Uh, starting off... I think changing poison to just how submission hold works would be really, really good. Um, mostly because when you're poisoned, you don't exactly feel like running away. You kind of are yeah, stuck. Lethargic, being like, yeah. yeah. So I think changing it to being immobile yeah. is and really, really cool. Fit, like, um, like constrictor or omega red. Oh yeah, it totally. Like that they they can't go anywhere. Like plain poison. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're holding the person there and poisoning them. Uh, it's cool, so I would hold. like that. Yeah. I also said Submission Hold. I really enjoy it as a standard power that gives a mobile. Nothing else in Heroclix is a standard, like, gives a mobile. Like, it's all special powers outside of that. And it was really cool to have access to standard characters with standard powers that gave that. Uh, my close second would have been Reversal. Reversal is a very oh, cool sure. power. If you fail a breakaway or fail to hit, you get a free attack against that person that failed to break away or failed to hit. Very cool power. Um, I think that's what most people used from WWE if they used anything because, uh, like, Nimrod had access to that by 
via the WWE ring and stuff. Yes, but, very uh, true. Pick a power aside, it was just a cool power to have on dial. Yeah. Um, number two is the same as the first, but it's which one do you not want to be put officially into the powers and abilities oh. card and why? They could so, put reversal in with super strength. Just combine those two. Oh, Pick that's, that's these, true. That would work. Back, and then the other two things, that reversal grants. Yeah. Yeah, and it that's a lot of sense. stuff going on. That is a lot of stuff. Of, a lot of text, but it, it wouldn't make sense. But it's a lot of text. Then we look at Pulse Wave. Mm. Mm. Oh, dude, old Pulse Wave and old TK were like these huge, massive bricks of text, and like we've really we've gone away from that. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah, yikes! All these options. Um, so yeah, number two is like which one do you definitely not want in the game. Uh, I'm gonna choose an ability, and I'm gonna say uh, ropes. Because oh. it, it was already like so, they already tried to make ropes more useful, but like they're not bouncing off a car. You know what I mean? Like that's blocking or hindering yeah. terrain. And but I can like, and it, it wasn't I can always bounce off of ropes. That's tree and car. One's hindering, yeah. one's blocking. Yeah, I could maybe see like a tree branch, kind of getting some sway for you. Yeah, that's like some like, princess bride. Uh, yeah, ropes or something. Ropes was already kind of like a stretch, but I, I appreciated it because it gave them more uses than only the WWE ring. So obviously it was good. It was just good game design. But for quote unquote realism, and I know here isn't realism. I'm just saying uh, no one besides the WWE characters would make sense to have ropes basically to like yeah. bounce off of their stuff. So it doesn't need to be in the game if I am there's not wrestlers. Most in it, basically, quote unquote turnbuckle maneuvers weren't like. If you are on a higher elevation than an opposing character, oh yeah, that that'd be would rough. Have been so hard. Like I used Eddie Fuck Guerrero's flying leap all the time, and it gives bonuses from ropes, but it's not necessary to have ropes. So uh, I put lightning speed and flying leap were unique enough, but it'd be super confusing with how close they are to charge and hypersonic. Not just color wise, but like the way they work. Um, flying leap, of course being a slightly worse slightly better version of charge it was capped at three speed or like three squares to move but it also gave you a plus one attack just for using it It it's just a plus one attack before they changed close combat expert and range combat expert uh flying leap was already giving you like permanent stat change or not permanent but um giving you stat adjustments for using it which is cool so uh those would be the two I would say not to port over to anything else because of the colors are already too similar. Yeah. And like the effects are pretty similar too. That's fair. Uh, number three, if you can put the WWE team ability to a new team that doesn't have a team ability yet, which team would it be and why? So this is a new team, not a pre existing one. So WWE team ability obviously gives you bounce and pin. Uh, to me, what always stood out the most about it was grand entrance. So I would give that to the celebrity keyword and call that walking the red carpet or runway or something like that. So then celebrity has kind of a um, their grand uh, entrance. Ooh, look at me. I'm a celebrity set. Yeah, but not them because I hate mutants. But um, (laughs) normal celebrities, yes. Uh, Even though there's not a lot of generic team abilities. I get police. But yeah, so I would really dig uh, celebrity having like a red carpet or runway type free move at the beginning. Give Sakari and Iron Man a free move, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing. I'm messing. Uh, give John Walker. Give John Walker a free move so I can yeah. charge 15 squares. Turn one, please. Yes, yeah. please. Give oh yeah, team free TK. Uh, Actually, yeah, please. That's yeah, just as just as good uh, as WWE team ability. Oh yeah, just uh, as good. I said, give it to TMNT. They don't have a team ability. There's a ton. Oh of, yeah, like obviously. At this point, not sure if they're making any more TMNT, but retroactively, if everyone with the keyword, like TMNT ally or whatever the keyword was, if they got a TMNT ability. You know what would be um, so cool? It's... Like, even though they don't have a team ability, give them, like, an extra bonus card that maybe costs, like, two or three points per person that has the keyword. Oh, like an and then it gives them, like, a team Yeah, that was the joke. That joke, that was the joke, Simeon. That was the joke, was that it's an ATA and it yeah. already exists. And Thank then you. since they have two joke. feet, we could give them feats. Um, oh, and since they're on a battlefield, oh, we could give them battlefield oh, conditions. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, bad jokes aside, no. Uh, instead of giving them the I same don't. protected of range that WWE got, uh, if it was if it was a like team and T ability based on WWE, give them all the dolphin symbol via like that team ability. Them have, not all of them. 
a, a good amount of them. Yeah. They sh- yeah. I mean, like Renee Tilly, maybe not, but like a lot of them probably should. Um, and then Grand Entrance, you could just call that like sewer travel or sewer surfing uh, or something. Hop in the turtle van or um, eight boarding around. Uh, what what was the song? Knockity knock, time to get shell shocked or whatever. What was Did they the, say? What, that? what was that? Was the that? newest turtles when they're in the like the they're in the elevator? Two thousand three. Oh no, the get, it's the 2015, 2014 the, movie. Yeah, something. One of the best performances by remember. Megan Fox ever. Um, anyways, uh, number four. If you could change an existing team ability to the WWE team ability, which team would it be and why? Uh, Street Fighter. Thousand percent Street oh, Fighter. Um, I didn't think about that. I can't yeah. think of a better one than Street Fighter, honestly. That's the only one that deserves it, to be honest. I said none because WWE worked specifically with those figures, and it'd be yeah. really, really good if you changed an existing team ability. Like, imagine Avengers or Justice League suddenly with the WWE team ability. Good little OP. Anybody playing anything else? Like, so many team abilities. I mean, Justice League and Avengers aside, because I think those are like the two least flavorful where it's just plus one move. Um, But so many team abilities make so much sense. Like Titans and X-Men make sense that they're like healing each other. Uh, Police make sense. Uh, Hydra, uh, Masters of Evil with like the new change. Even prior to the change, Masters of Evil made sense, but it makes even more sense now. Doom team ability with that change makes a lot more sense now. Uh, it was a lot cooler back when it was wild card, but it makes a lot more sense now. Spider Man being a wild card makes a ton of sense. Wild card being a wild card makes a lot of sense. Uh, what Underworld team ability does makes a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, yeah. I can't think of one that I would really change. Street Fighter is a good point. Uh, there's probably some like older indie ones. Really, just like all the Golden Age ones just say they now have WWE team ability. Oh, you used to have Serpent Society? Welcome to the WWE. Yeah, baby. There were snakes in the WWE. It's fine. That's no, that's just true. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right. Uh, next up, number five. Any special power that only a WWE HeroClix characters have that you would put on a comic book character HeroClix style? I don't know who I'd put this on, but like numbers game from main set Triple H with the empower, the empower for everyone yeah. that shares a keyword with him. Yeah, so good. that's just so nasty, man. Like, it's just so good. I would actually, I would have really liked that if the Wrecker had it. Um, Any oh, of the Wreckers gosh. had it. it that would, could you imagine, team, dude? Or, like, I, whatever his name team, like, keywords are, yeah. Yeah, dude, like Wrecking Crew or Masters of Evil. Combine that with their team ability, they'd be insane. Yeah. Actually insane. It'd be so good. Yeah. But yeah. So it gave, yeah, it gave anyone with a named uh, keyword that wasn't WWE in power. And so... If you used it in combination with like Steve Rogers, the rare from Captain America and the Avengers, um, you could make Triple H an Avenger, and then everyone with the Avengers keyword got in power. So yeah, it was pretty pretty nuts. The, like what it was really you good. It once it was dope. Yeah, everyone on your team pretty much Love has uh, it. So much, so good, dude. Um, I went with the Oscar Lock. It's one of my favorite of powers of in course. WWE. I know Calder probably saw this coming. Mm-hmm. But yeah. guess what? You, no one sees Asuka coming. Never. Uh, she's the Empress of Tomorrow. So you did not know. That's what I was going to say. Uh, I think it'd be a great power for characters like Craven, where like he's like holding his prey down. Or uh, okay. going back to like the poison kind of thing, a man thing, slowly poisoning their opponent, like the opposing character, more and more each turn. Like, they can't get away from him. Like, poison doesn't dilute the more it gets used. It's not like, ah, that affected me the same as the first time. Like, if you take more poison or get poisoned more, it's going to hurt you more the more you, like, ingest. Right, you know, yeah. Whether it's, like, aerosol or whatever. Um, Rat poison. So, yeah. Like, Something. Uh, maybe we just change poison to submission hold. No, we just change it to the Oscar lock. It's just, you know, yeah, first time it's Oscar done. Lock. It's one. Yeah. Like, this is plenty of text for for the new poison um, but yeah uh, easy for standard power mobile, they that. take one damage oh good poison would be like a top tier power then if i can just like start like immobilizing and yeah damaging people for three by turn three like dang uh but yeah that's that's my answer oscar locks always um, been my favorite power all right second close second would have been uh eddie's uh one die, oh one die one roll drop. yeah we can we kind of get stuff like that you know, there's not 
it, it was unique, but yeah. Um, anyways, I mean, Saturn Nine has it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number six. Will you miss any WWE powers or abilities? If so, which ones? I'm probably gonna miss uh, signatures the most. Signature moves. Those are fun traits. A lot of them are really really cool. I really liked Macho Man's signature a ton. Um, so yeah, like I'm gonna miss signatures a lot. I love. Yeah, I really like signatures. They're just so fun. No, yeah, that was probably the, the coolest thing. I one of the coolest. I'll things. miss Shawn Michaels scooting across the board for <laughs> oh, yes damage out of nowhere, thirteen for five or whatever, all on his own lonesome. Uh, I said I won't miss him because I still play WWE in Silver Age and Golden Age, and I think they're oh. still going to be viable as long as they're protected from range, as long as they have like decent cheap uh, modifiers and stuff like celebrity or whatever team you build with. And that's like the thing. I don't ever build strictly WWE anymore. Not since um, I was running like Prezzer card on the team. Not it was since never rules strict change. WWE. It was never strict yeah, WWE. How dare you? Yeah, not since Prezzer card turned out. Like I called up Vince McMahon and he was like, no, I've never hired anyone named Prez Rickard. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> technically I um ran. yeah but no, anyway I, yeah still yeah viable. i think yeah. if you just slip a few wwe characters into already name or already keyworded teams i think they'll do fine. celebrity mystical warrior like there's a handful of good ones uh, yeah yeah undertaker um not one shot but did like one attack kill a 175 point nimrod is eddie oh, nice. witted poisoned or eddie Eddie outwitted Lasso from El Pasoed, and then Undertaker, um, what was it, Tombstone Pile drivered him. Like him. Nice. Seven damage in one turn. Um, right through his, next up, yeah. question, speaking of seven, question seven here. Uh, why do you think WWE Hero Clicks failed, and how would you fix the problems uh, of why it failed? So, I don't know if it failed necessarily. I don't know if it was the sales um that killed it because clearly it was planned on getting another wave, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know if it failed that way. With the amount of work think, WizKids did in wave four, wave two, yeah, it wasn't strictly just. Um, I will say, if we're saying like, why do you think there were so many left over? Uh, I think making them uh, seeing what you get was a mistake. Personally, I do. I really do. I think that might have been a WWE call saying like, we want to make sure they know exactly what figures they're getting. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Um, but I think if it was instead like five dollar gravity feeds, I mean, I would have bought like two gravity feeds of that set. Yeah, you know? I still would have got with all rarities, the figures. whatever. I would have bought them all no matter what. But then I would have had a really cool gravity feed box for display. And to be fair, I have a really cool rock and sock connection and uh, WB ring mix match box that that aren't that do look cool. Um, but I would have liked to WB like gravity feed. Honestly, I think I think it would have been better as a gravity feed than the whatever ones because then it's like okay, I buy. You know, Triple H, I buy Shawn Michaels, well, not even him, whatever, but you like, I buy him, Eddie Guerrero, I buy Finn Balor, I buy whatever, and then it's like done. You know, I don't buy AJ Styles or Trish Stratus or, you know, whoever. You know, it's like, it's good that people can choose who they want. Characters, and then exactly. Less uh, usable. Well, it's like, I guess. look at Eternals, for example. If Eternals was on the shelves in that same way, then it's like, okay, so Sprite is gone, and then like, Deviant. Well, Werewolf Deviant's gone, and then if we say the chases are normal figures, then yeah, probably Unimind is gone, but not the other one, you know. And then like we have the rest of the Eternals are chilling there, you know. And maybe one person buys a full set of just right. Eternal once, but I mean, you know, even then, are you going to buy all of the common and all of the rares, or are you just gonna right buy exactly enough to fill out like an Eternals team and have the sculpts? No, yeah, like I, I definitely think, and I. Again, we have zero idea of like what all was up to like WizKids. Uh, obviously, the only other figures they ever released in that kind of capacity were the um, the sculpts, oh, deep cuts, yeah, deep yeah. cuts. Um, because other than that, like they've never re- like their their whole thing is it's a collectible game, and so there's got to be some sort of rarity and blind like booster kind of situation for people to buy. Because like nobody wants at the end of the day. I mean, I, I'll take a full CUR, but nobody wants, like, to open a pack with a rare. Everybody wants to open the pack with, like, the chase or the super rare or the right. ultra chase or, like, the, the prime. Um, and so, yeah, when it, like when they take away that gamble, like, kind of 
like I want like the better rarity. I have to buy multiples. Um, when they take that away and you can just specifically buy the ones that you want, it does change things. And I think it was, I don't know. I think it was cool. I appreciated it. I still bought one. No, of every I, figure. I did. Yeah. I still pre-ordered everything from wave two. Um, but yep. at the end of the day, so did I. So did I. The people that weren't interested in WWE maybe bought like the one that they thought would do something interesting. Maybe didn't right. buy any of them. Like maybe bought you know a handful. I know some people that don't know WWE at all, but they bought like Andre the Giant and uh, Macho Man. Oh right, because they know yeah from for pop just culture from movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, moving on here though, uh, number eight is. We know we're never going to get Wave 2. Thanks for reminding us, Malcolm. Um, which hero clicks did you want from Wave 2? So, Kurt Angle was probably my number one want. I wanted to be like, I just beat you with a broken freaking neck. Or, you know, I wanted to be like, intelligence, integrity, and intensity. You know, like, I wanted to drink milk, flash at my opponent's fit. You know, like, I, I was excited for Kurt Angle the most. Uh, and then it probably goes like, cowboy hat. I wanted to wear a tiny cowboy hat. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was like Kurt Angle, Hulk Hogan, all of the New Day, uh, and then Randy Orton were probably like my top, yeah. like wants from Orton it for, for like, sure. Because I I feel like WWE Wave Two. I don't remember the timeline, but uh, we saw Meme Cena, the clear John yeah, Cena skull, Cena. and then we saw like Randy Orton. I think after that, and I was like, yeah. ooh, they'll probably lean into it and do like RKO out of nowhere. They'll do like something fun. Actually, Maybe they dude. wouldn't have. I don't know. That's the sad thing is we'll just never know what the dial designs that they did were because I, I guarantee they got to that point. Know. They definitely like they, they had the sculpts 3d rendered. They probably got to the point where they were designing dials. Um, but yeah, uh, to go along with that, like Kurt Angle, obviously is one of the biggest guys in WWE when I was growing up. Steam, yeah. Ricky Steamboat. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, Sting, of course. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many characters. I honestly, like, I could just keep going, but, like, I essentially, I would have bought, I had pre ordered all of Wave 2. I would have oh, bought yeah, I was going to buy it all. WWE they had put out, regardless yeah. of what character or person that was. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura would have been cool. Yeah, I forgot he was in it. That's hilarious. Yeah, he was supposed to be in there. So was, uh, guess, yeah, The, the Fiend. The Fiend, dude. I was I was excited for Bailey too. Bailey was kind of my girl. This yeah. was bad Bailey, but I was still excited for Bailey. Um, yeah, the Bailey to Bailey suplex. Yeah, dude. Oh, so best, good. Best pun in WWE. <laughs> so good, dude. Um, uh, number nine. Uh, Malcolm asked to rate on a scale of one to ten everybody in the first wave. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna rate it as a as a set though. Um, and as a set, it's like a seven point five in yeah. my opinion. It's a really good set. I, I really enjoyed it. You the same? Yeah. There were definitely some misses for me, but more often than not, it's figures that I'm willing to play and wanted to collect. Yeah. So it's it wasn't a perfect set, but obviously, you know, for it to be a perfect set, it would have been like just the wrestlers that I liked. That you just liked, the wrestlers yeah. That I wanted, and they all would have been like, good enough to win at Worlds or something. Uh, um, that would have been like a know, 10, but still. But they really. did a good job of blending old wrestlers, attitude wrestlers, New wrestler, like we yeah. did a good job of getting Grab each era. Yeah, I felt eras. represented, you know, that WWE could pull from, you know, WWF to attitude to now, and so I really appreciated that they chose a lot of iconic ones. They chose some ones not as iconic, which I, you know, should have had an a lot of people will appreciate game. that. Uh, For World gosh. Wildlife Foundation stealing the name been... from Vince McMahon, scumbags! How how could they? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was just like a solid hero click set when it comes down to it. Uh, and then number 10, he asks, if in the future WWE would come back, what changes would you want and what characters would you wish they would make? Um, I wish they would have some ability to give themselves an action token because like, or to take off an action token. I wish that would be more prevalent, whether uh, adding willpower, willpower, or, yeah. willpower to WWE or something would be nice since you specifically did give them all in dom i would like maybe wve humility also just gives them willpower now you know maybe worth it we'll, mean, we'll see i know it already does a lot i'll say but like, um competitively, i would like that WWE for helping signatures casually yeah. people already hate that it's like protected from range um true yeah people do so hate that people are like how do i even deal with it and i was like well you've heard of stealth before right 
Uh, yeah, come on, man. But no. Uh, um, sorry. Yeah, you finish your thought. Um, but yeah, so like that's that's kind of the small changes I want. Just that way, it's as you used to be able to easily give them one token with like theme prop, and now I just wish you'd be able to easily clear them or something so that we can use the signatures more because I like the signatures. As far as people uh, that I want in the in like them to make that they hadn't like made before, uh, Booker T comes to like oh, yeah. the first person I think of that I really want Five a Booker time. T. Uh, to be yeah, dude. Um, the and then like Lex Luger, uh, Batista to fill out. I mean, I know we have a drag; evolution. it's not the same, but like to fill out evolution, I would really like a Batista. Um, but yeah, like that's like a handful of people uh, that I would want Riddle. As far as like modern WWE goes, um, we we Sammy are we're already slated for a Drew McIntyre. Uh, I would actually take a Sami Zayn. He's fun, <laughs> dude. He is hilarious. He's a really funny guy. Um, but I really like Riddle. I really like Riddle with Randy Orton. I really liked Riddle in NXT. I preferred him being Matt Riddle before he was just Riddle, but I still like him uh, as a character. So as like a uh, character a person, you know, a guy who. Doesn't wear shoes, like I don't know, but like yeah. he's he's like a fun he's like a fun dude. He's like a stoner personality is like his thing, but he's like a really funny like character. So I've enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, those are kind of be the people I'd like to see, and then that I can just think of off top. Obviously, there's more, but yeah. Anyways, that's what I would change or add. Uh, Eugene, of course, okay, gotta have Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. South Dakota represent. Yeah, South Dakota represent. Oh, Brock Lesnar too. Brock oh, Lesnar, yeah, South we Dakota. Never got a Brock Lesnar, man. Yeah, that'd be great, How dude. Is that possible. Got two Cenas and no Brock Lesnar. Um, also, never That's got a Goldberg. Uh, I know Goldberg. I'm okay with no Goldberg, but yeah, I'm okay with it too. Know, it's just it's a I spear. Guess, as as names go. It's yeah. another spear. It's oh, a jackhammer. If you use jack your spear, hammer. give him a jackhammer, uh, and then if yeah, they dude. aren't KO'd, give him another spear and another jackhammer. Oh if the game God. is still going past the five minute mark, Goldberg wins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because he can't, he doesn't have stamina. Uh, I that said just do. everyone. Um, my personal favorite currently is the Viking Experience or the Viking Raiders or whatever that oh, yeah. has been changed to at this yeah. point. Uh, but man, what a fun tag team! Yeah. Just two huge dudes like doing some like ridiculous, crazy stuff. Uh, not just high flyers, but like very mobile, and then like. I've never sure. seen a tag team since like the Dudleys, uh, like use their own uh, tag team partner's body to attack somebody. Um, it's it's you do hilarious that a lot. To see. Yeah, it's hilarious seeing them like Funny. lift each other up and just like slam each other down on like opposing uh, or like opponents. I'm talking about it in Hero Clicks. Uh, uh, but yeah. you, um, the heavy machinery at all, Otis and Fudge, they got rid of the other guy. I can't even remember his name. I feel really bad. With black hair dude but did you care about like heavy machinery otis at all i guess it's now it's the alpha academy with otis and old shorty mcshort short chad gable um but otis was like a fun character a little goofy ah, it feels so bad what is his name you don't know otis oh, yeah. at all heavy machinery? yeah you still have like, okay. kind of big beard yeah, yeah, tucker yeah. tucky 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 that's what it was it was otis and tucker yeah. man i feel bad getting well, tucker's again, name i feel like that's like a vince mcmahon thing when they got rid of him yeah, and then he made Otis. And ugh, dude, I would have liked like not a not a Bobcat key, key Aircat. Um, like a NXT Lee would have been so something. He's, he's whatever he's in AEW now. Hey, if Wizkids picks up the AEW license, then I'm more excited. Honestly, I don't even want yeah. WWE. I mean, I do want WWE too, but if they can convince AEW to get AEW, into the board yeah. game, uh, miniatures game market, then that gives me. My Sting, Darby Allen team, that gives me uh, Chris Jericho. Um, that would be amazing. Uh, it gives me Kenny Omega, a uh, ton of good stuff. Uh, Adam Page, um, your boy, Orange Man, Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Uh, <laughs> orange, orange Man. Yeah. Orange Man. No, the orange guy. Uh, it gives us Miro. Squeezed, yeah. uh, slash, you know, Rusev. That's cool. Um, a lot of w- it gives us Daniel Bryan. <laughs> it gives us a lot of WWE talent that I wish they would have made, and now we get the Daniel Bryan, you know. But oh, as yeah. AEW Daniel Bryan, um, I would have liked the vegan AEW Daniel Bryan. Also, I have to imagine that between the two companies, AEW is probably going to give a lot more leeway on how it's used. Um, yeah, 
Uh, they haven't really done anything outside of like toys. They haven't really done board games or card games or anything, unless there's like a set of. I mean, and that's the thing. Like playing cards. Kids, if WizKids sales were decent, like, yeah. I, mean, I obviously don't know what like their internal like revenue. For yeah, them. maybe they're like, like we're we never touching wrestling. wrestling ever again. That was terrible or something. I don't um, know. I will say like every WWE fan I know is also a fan of AEW, but not every yeah. AEW fan I know is a fan of WWE. <laughs> they so kind of hate WWE a, a little bigger, bit. bit cross-section of people that play hero clicks and like aew than people that like hero clicks and yeah. wwe um but that's i mean again that um, could be literally the 400 people that i've like true. assumed in my hey, head 400's a big percentage as far as hero clicks goes 400 is a pretty decent number of people to buy it um let's go ahead and jump into uh our discord i'm oh, sorry yeah, yeah our discord questions i think we're good I think we covered everything yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, let's uh see. any last right? points? I don't um, think so. Oh, uh, we got off. We got would I change team. or want? Oh, right. Yours. Oh, gosh. Um, Sorry. More variants. So, I, I, yeah, I said everyone, basically, like whoever. And then I said Viking Raiders or uh, the Viking Experience or whatever they're called now. But more variants and point cost. So, like, more characters that are lower point cost. Like any set, like where you've got characters that are like 30 points, 40 points, 70 points, 80 points. Um, seemed like too many WWE characters were high points and I could only play essentially three on a team uh, unless I really finagled it. But then more support slash manager figures, just like the people in the corner. Um, or if that was like an optional point value, like kind of like a retaliation, but they're just like your corner man. Like if I could put Kane in the corner uh, for this match, he costs like 20 points, you know, has like a click like the uh, Kingdom Come figures. Um, Ooh something like that like that would be like something that i'd be really interested in like what can they do with like an alternate click down dial with like a, a 20 point line that helps me doesn't necessarily like make that character broken or anything but uh lets me fill out the points because it was really hard to make a wwe theme team for like modern hero clicks it really was uh without going into like other um what would you call it? Like other There's sets and stuff. Yeah. The properties. Cause like the lowest is like what? 45. I think is the cheapest WD figure you can I, get. So Oscar was like 40. Oh, 40. That's, then yeah, it would yeah, be Oscar. Yeah. I used her so often, but, um, uh, yeah, there, there was not a ton of variance in points. Like you could, you could find a few figures that would like rock had a 40 point dial. Triple H had a 45. I've read and, and that's, that. That's what I would 45. say. If they added managers, and it would be really good. Some 20, 30 point managers. But also, like, it would be very solid. It was bad playing those figures at those low point dials because then they lose yeah. half of that team ability. They lose, lose that TA. It's that, rough. That protection from range. And they don't, halfway down their dials, they don't have good stats. So they're almost all 17s. But yeah, rough. that was Malcolm's questions. Uh, if you want to question us like Malcolm does, feel free to message the Facebook page. Or send us an email at dialh for hero clicks at gmail.com. Also, yeah. though, the English way, not the Roman numeral way. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't put a five for the Dial X's H -I -V or one where the I's are. For hero clicks. Yeah, the IV for <laughs> Um, all right, jumping over to Discord, Luke asks, spinning off on the value corner segment. We recently brought a few pals into the game, and they really seem to be enjoying it. They started with sets like Rise and Fall, and I've been casually grabbing boosters from every set released since then. With most venues either already or soon to be returning to in-person play, with a limit of, let's say, 30 bucks USD, what's a fun starter-ish team that you would build for them for some low-key competitive type Silver Age games, maybe say a win a map? Uh, I built a team, I, I added it all up, and it does come out to under 30 bucks, and I really like this team. So... I think for a new player, um, what I first thought was they're going to want to play some like characters they know. So I built a team of Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor uh, with some extra help. But these guys are all their shifting focus versions, which I think really helps add to some lower-ish win-a-map type competitive. Um, the shifting focus store from War of the Realms, I think he's solid for many reasons. But on any given click number, he's a 12 for 4. Uh, on all throughout all of his like shifting focus styles, which is really really good um, Which is just you know, like I said really really good always be like a 12 for 4 at any point in time uh, The Iron Man has some pick a power type stuff which gives him uh, attack powers from either 
on his dial or from other shifting focus iron men he also has the stealth and outwit option he's got a running shot energy explosion option he's got a charge i think quake option um and then he also has assembled avengers which is really good and it's an avengers theme team and then the captain america is good for a lot of reasons um he can be a 12 attack he can be a 12 for four which is or sorry he can be a 13 for four if he chooses close combat expert or he can have running shot with a 12 for three uh, for his common version and his uncommon version is great because it can give everybody adjacent to him plus one defense from range um, and then Captain America can always be I think at least a 10 attack somewhere on there um, and then his leadership one is like okay I guess uh, and then for our taxi we have Happy Hogan who's just a very cheap taxi can carry two people um, and he's got some other fun stuff but carry two people he's got stealth he's got Avengers and then we have a giant girl for 10 points. Uh, if you use the main set one, she's the cheapest for like three bucks. But actually, we're so under budget, you could choose the starter set giant girl if you want that version instead. Um, and then to fill out thus the points, we have Wanda Maximoff from uh, whatever, Marvel Studios Disney Plus with her 19 defend and her prob. So that's kind of like the big thing is it's also a little bit of a defense tank team give everybody a 19 defend and then you can switch to that captain america that gives you all a plus one defense from range uh and it's really good and then he himself i think has esd or maybe t- now he's got toughness top dial but anyways uh so you're all like a 20 from range or a 19 up close which is really really good or i think in giant girl's case if you do the cheap one she's a 21 up close with the defend so yeah giant girl can carry someone out uh happy can carry two people out however you want to. And then there's six people on the team, so that way when Iron Man uses his assembled Avengers, it will be able to uh, do both if he has you know six or more figures. So that is my my mini one. The team came out to $18.30 with the main set giant girl. So that is uh, that is a team I would build. So we're, we're very much we're doing, under budget. Yeah, we're doing... Um, I didn't know we were doing prices. Oh, okay. oh I, okay. did, I did the math. I did the math for it. So <laughs> sadly can't get the rare iron man for any cheaper than five bucks so if you feel like you don't need him take it off and you can get all of this at cool stuff inc except for the rare iron man he is gouge priced by a certain avian and orc uh website so if you don't want to use that one that's totally fine i understand um but yeah the rest of these are pretty cheap so but yeah that's, that's the team i built i went with a very modern build um so luke said they uh, started with Rise and Fall, we've been grabbing from boosters from every set released since then. So, as far as, and this is like a thing, I really hope that there's a popper tournament that comes out soon. I really hope oh, somebody like runs one here. because we've had some really solid CURs, uh, or just common and uncommons, I guess, if you don't want to include the rares. But we've had some really solid, like super solid commons and uncommons. Disney Plus is one that I'm like, I'm super excited for Disney Plus uh, Popper. Um, oh, so yes, much good absolutely. With like, you know, the Captain Carter. I mean, even just like the the Strange Supreme uh, at like 195. You obviously can't play the object, but like at 195, maybe he'll hold his own in like like you know that. Maybe not. Uh, maybe like the uh, the majority of the uh, Spooktacular figures like hold their own but all that to say that's not what i built at all (laughs) oh nice good job that's that's what i'm looking forward to but that's not at all what i built so uh (laughs) from rise and fall uh the main thing that i'm gonna build with is x-men swap so uh, we've got professor x for 25 points he's got stealth outwit he's got uh, a rally die that is traded leadership and then when he uses it before rolling the d6 you can instead remove his rally die to use that as a result it's a rally five so it automatically succeeds Pretty cool. Just 25 points for leadership, outwit, stealth. Um, And then, of course, he has the whole you can shift out five friendly characters with the same number of characters from your sideline and on their starting clicks. Uh, All replacement and replaced characters must have the X-Men, Shi'ar, or Illuminati keywords and different names. Total points of the replacement characters can't exceed the total points of the replaced characters, so you can't somehow get more points on the board, which makes sense. The main force, I'm not really sure like what exactly it would end up after swaps. I didn't go that far, but I will say like some of the figures that I would have built with just to like hit 300 points and maybe like don't swap any out at all. Um, number one would have been the from the Avengers Empire. What was that? Uh, was it called Avengers Empire? 
or was it just called Empire? Avengers Fantastic Four Empire. Four Empire. Yeah, yeah it was um, a bunch of stuff. The 007 Wolverine. He's Fantastic Four. He's Avengers. He's X-Men. All three keywords make sense. He's in the Fantastic Four suit. Uh, this guy's 75 points, Fantastic Four team ability, and the team player team ability, so he can copy X-Men. Two lightning bolts with zero range, so he can attack two people with his charge. He has Blades Exploit for the majority of his dial. His last two clicks, he gets Flurry with no attack power and no damage power. He goes from Invuln to Combat Reflexes his whole dial, and then he has Traded Regen, and when he has two action tokens, he has Regen as free. It says, I don't take kindly to that. Okay. What a weird way to phrase it, Wolverine. Uh, hmm. But really solid Wolverine. For 75 points, that gives you a lot of leeway to swap into anything else that's like a higher point cost, big heavy hitter kind of guy. But I like his longevity. I like how his dial works. Uh, next up is from the same set from Avengers Fantastic Four Empire, Dazzler, number 024. She has hmm. running shot. Uh, when she hits with a range attack, choose one to last until your next turn. A hit target can't use improved targeting, or a hit target modifies range minus three. Both very good. If they can't already use improved targeting, then minus their range by three, and that's pretty solid. She also brings the shield team ability to this team, so not a lot of X-Men do that, but she's got shield and X-Men. That means that Wolverine I just talked about can also copy shield. So now you could potentially have two. She's only 35 points. She also has the trait that is during force construction, choose up to two friendly characters that share a keyword with her and choose either shield or X-Men team ability. And the chosen character can use the chosen team ability until, uh, oh, chosen team ability this game. So the whole game, you can essentially give out shield because everyone on this team has X-Men. Uh, so... Yeah, you can hand out two X-Men to anyone other than Wolverine who can just copy it, or hand out S.H.I.E.L.D. to anyone other than Wolverine who can just copy it. Uh, next up is from the X-Men Rise and Fall. It's Dr. Moira McTaggart. She's the one that can power action give an adjacent friendly character with the X-Men keyword a rally die. Oh, yeah. Die. Very yeah, solid. That's good. Almost any character that has a rally die, being able to start with it is pretty solid. Uh, on top of that, she has... Her own rally die, um, everyone in X-Men Rise and Fall was a rally five, so she has that. And it's power, remove a rally die from Dr. Moira McTaggart to heal an adjacent character two clicks. So it's not X-Men team ability, but it's slightly better. She doesn't take damage from it. She has super senses. She has that special damage power that gives uh, other friendlies a rally die. She's 20 points. She's unique. She's just really cheap. She helps your, like, theme team, and uh, she can be used as, like, X-Men team ability fodder if need be. Otherwise, handing out rally dies is cool. So because she's on there, I added two characters that are really good. Actually, three characters that are really good with rally dies. Uh, the first one is the Uncommon Mystique for 40 points. She has Stealth, Blades, Combat Reflexes. So if your opposing characters perhaps get hit by Dazzler and can't use their improved targeting, then... Mystique is a 19 from close because she's in stealth and they can't see through it. Um, right. Her rally five is super senses. And when she uses it before rolling the D six, you may instead remove her rally die and use it as a result. So essentially if she gets a rally die and your opponent can't outwit her super senses, then she just auto succeeds at least once. Um, that's basically it. Yeah. That mystique, she goes from, uh, stealth blades, combat reflexes to sidestep, penetrating psychic blast, close combat expert, which is a really weird combination, but it's also with her six range, two targets, it's pretty solid. Uh, she also has Brotherhood of Mutants team ability, which not for nothing. I mean, being able to remove dice from yourself or tar that, that, blah, blah, blah. being able to remove tokens from yourself is pretty cool. Um, next up on the rally front is the 025 Banshee. Uh, at 45 points, so half of his dial. He's six range, triple bolt, running shot, penetrating psychic blast, energy shield deflection, and when he makes a penetrating psychic blast attack, if he has his rally dice on, you can replace the die in the attack roll with his rally die, which is a five, meaning you're probably going to hit whichever dice you replace. A five is a pretty good die replacement. Uh, for 45 points, he's also just a flyer that can taxi people around. 
He also just has X-Men team ability. He has Psychic Blast, the whole dial. He gets, like, sidestep. The triple bolt is pretty awesome. I've played this guy a handful of times, and being able to target three people um, really, like, mitigates the fact that you might miss with, like, his 10 and 11 attack value. But, uh, no, that rally die just makes him, like, a very, very dangerous option. And... For 45 points, his damage value is never lower than a 3, and on his last click, it's a 4 with Psychic Blast, so pretty solid. Um, and then almost last, but the last, their last Rally character, uh, this good old Colossus from X-Men Rise and Fall. He can destroy movement while he's, or destroy movement while he's blocking. He can destroy blocking while moving. He has Charge Blades. He has a special defense power that is impervious, protected outwit, so they can't get rid of that impervious. And then he has a rally five, which is opposing attack rolls. When Colossus uses impervious before rolling the D6, you may instead remove his rally die to use it as a result. So they can't outwit it. They can still psychic blast or exploit or pen damage through it, but there's a good chance that like they might not have that. Maybe you can close the gap. And he's got really solid damage throughout his dial. Uh, it never goes below an 11 attack, mostly a 4 damage. Top dial, he's an 11 for 3 with blades and empower. Um, X-Men team ability again, so like good ways to heal up. This is like one of the guys that uh, you just kind of like body block with him, and if they don't have any way to do pen damage, or you can outwit it or get rid of that character that does pen damage, he just becomes a real headache because every rally die he gets... He gets to use impervious and keep <laughs> keep getting rally dies. Uh, that comes out to 290. So last but not least is Multiple Man. So Multiple Man is the Underworld team ability and X Men. So not only can he carry somebody like Wolverine by having Wolverine copy the uh, Underworld team ability, he can also just straight up carry. Um, I think the way that power the uh, team ability works is i think you can just carry up one like one person that shares a keyword with them so he's got that he's got uh close combat expert on top dial so he's an 11 for three for 10 points um if somehow they don't damage him for more than two he gets to spit out a dupe uh and then yeah he's mostly just x-men fodder it's and, uh, uh incredibly fodder. annoying yeah he is not at ten points because he can he can die with one hit, but ah uh, yeah, that's at pretty 40, good. He's like extremely annoying. I will say like you stack multiple mans really fast. At uh, I was playing yeah, a I... bunch of them at forty points a couple weeks ago, and I had completely forgot that the zero point dupes on click nine can still power action use the X Men team ability to heal the forty point uh, multiple mans up. So that becomes like a real liability late game when all of a sudden all of these zero point characters are doing X-Men team ability power actions to heal up 40 point multiple man. Uh, it's pretty solid. Um, this one of course is just like filler, just 10 points. Um, but I mean for 10 points, a body blocker or X-Men team ability, like healer, uh, whatever he's doing, it's not bad. Yeah. And that's, that's the team. I, I could go into like what you could switch off into, but obviously, um, you can fill out your sideline with nine commons or uncommons that have the X Men keyword, and just figure out the uh, figure out the points. I will say, X of Swords is obviously bringing even more really solid commons and uncommons for X Men team ability, like Tarot and Peeper, and uh, dang, even uh, good old Sink looking a lot better than his XXS days. Ah, uh, very true. <laughs> I mean. The X-Men, the X-Men age better and better with, like, every set, and they get cheaper and cheaper. Um, By the dozen. They're not necessarily like better and cheaper, but, like, how do they do it? Every doctors hate this one weird trick that X-Men are using. Stay young forever. Oh, yeah, it's called being resurrected. Or, uh, yeah, it's called being X-Men are weird. <laughs> be a mutant. Muties. Uh, all right, next question. We do have a lot to get through here. Uh, the rest of these should be a little bit easier. Um, Alex asks, with no WWE Wave 2, thanks for reminding us again for the second time this episode. Yeah, Thank this? you for driving that knife deeper. Um, what if WizKids were to errata the Street Fighter figures to have WWE TA? Or just make Street Fighter, you know, work the same as WWE? Um, let's just say in a perfect world, they give the Street Fighter set a legacy card. 
for everybody, and they give them the WWE team ability is what the Street Fighter team ability now does. What Street Fighter figure do you reach for first uh, to add to a team? Um, M. Bison, yeah, dude. I was say, M. Bison's the top. Dude, like straight for M. Bison, man. Um, Chun-Li with her yeah. little flurry special He's powers. Up there. Pretty cool. Um, man, I can't, I can't remember all of them. Akuma. Uh, who's the... He's the like electric eel, whatever guy. Uh, Blanca? Blanca, Blanca, Blanca. I think Blanca. Blanca yeah, yeah. I really liked the um so like the rare cheese. Ken sculpt. Blanca. Uh, Can I get some Blanca cheese on that quesadilla, please? Or sorry, the uncommon Ken. The rare? No, it's the rare. It's the rare. Yeah, the rare Ken sculpt is probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Tatsume, yeah, se- sepi pepiaki or whatever the kick one. I don't know. I don't know how to say these words. Uh, Guile, big Guile guy. Uh, but he's not good. Uh, oh, maybe yeah. points. You oh, know, none of them are. None of them are great. No, none of them are good. No, nah, that's that's kind of true. Pretty bad, dude. Like, oh, E Honda. E Honda just kind of has flurry. So him with WWE makes him a lot better first yeah. turn, and then move off. But M Bison is it? M Bison's got freaking hypersonic speed, guys. Like I forgot they had primes, right? Well, they had B yeah. versions. They they, they had they had the cool primes before cool primes existed. They had the B versions that were unique. Um yeah. before XDPS. I was gonna say there's For, technically three Blancas and they all have different colors. Yeah. Um because there's also uh, like some sort of weird gravity feed or something. And Geef. So it was it was the weird gravity feed. Um and then they had a starter too. Yeah. Uh, but the gravity feed was the old ones where it was the cardboard box that surrounded them, where they were all um what's it called? Like LE figures. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Dalsum. Uh, and then the Senate asks, how receptive... <laughs> so all of his questions have been very Star Wars focused, which is kind of like, hey guys, Strange. talk about the thing I like, which is okay, because I like Star <laughs> Wars. Um, but he's like, how receptive would you be to a Star Wars Clone Wars full booster set with figures done in that cartoon style of like XDPS, JLU, stuff like that. And he said, now... He means the, the 2D... Star Wars Clone Worlds. I and not the 3D Star Wars Clone. Worlds. I'm guessing 3D. What? My opinion. I would guess maybe he's yeah, saying 2D. Very cool, very stylized Samurai Jack. Well, I dude, I love the 2D one. Don't get me wrong, but like, mm-hmm. there's uh, about a thousand times more to go off of of the yeah, normal there is, or not the normal the 3D. Uh, and how it's receptive really would out. we be? Like at this point, any IP that WizKids could pick up. Yeah, would be. I'm down for it. Receptive. Anything unique. Like, Hundred percent, yeah. Is it Scooby Doo? I don't care. Is it uh, what was what was the thing that we thought was going to get clicks but didn't? Um, My Little My Pony. Little Pony. Yeah. Transforming. Transformers. Uh, Di Joe. Down for anything that's like brings in new people and is cool. Um, Absolutely. By cool, I mean literally anything that's ever been produced on yeah. television like is cool for me. Um, as far as like the cartoon stylization, I'm a hundred percent down for that too. Like Clone Wars. Yeah. I watched. All of Clone Wars, I watched like all of like the TV, like the 3D. Um, yeah, we'll say really hate the weird uh, Bat Child and like Mothra planet where there's like the good and dark side of like the Force. The oh force yeah, the, what was going on with that? Is the cool people versions? Yeah. I didn't like that episode whatsoever. So um, bad. You think that would have came up in a movie where they're like, hey, remember uh, that crazy dude that could turn into a bat? And he wanted you to join the dark side, wild, huh, Anakin? And then Anakin, Anakin why do you think? Uh... Yeah, what about the the floaty lady that could turn into like a flying sea manta ray? And you were like, yeah, yeah, crazy that we were on a planet where that happened. We, we probably dreamt that. There's let's, always a let's bigger just fish. Never mention this ever again. Yeah, we um, never talk about this. Uh, Chance goes on to ask. Additionally, this is also hyper specific. Would you purchase a Fast Forces if they made two, good and bad? One would be the clone commandos of Delta Squad specifically, and then two other named clones. But also, not the Bad Batch for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then he says, and the other would be filled with iconic bounty hunters like Bosk, Dengar, IG-8. And he leaves out maybe the most iconic one out of all of them. Boba Fett, but okay. And then as a bonus, they would each come with some uh, unique equipment. Um, did, I'm did okay with uh, Clone Squad. He said Bosk. Oh. I think Bosk is the most, the most iconic out of all of them. Was, yeah. yeah. No. He's a lizard. No. Man. No, it's Boba Fett. Oh. It's definitely Boba Fett, though. Not the lizard man. 
not the lizard man. Although I will say he's the first one we see, right? Because we see his foot first, and then it pans up in Empire, and it's like, oh, scary lizard man. Um, I would also want Greedo to be in there. I know he wasn't part of that like Boss Dengar IG88 team. I guess we're gonna say team in quotes. We don't they don't do anything, you know. It's just Boba who we see something. But I'd like to see a Greedo. He's the first bounty hunter like we see in the show, which is cool. Um, I don't know who is the clone commandos of Delta. Is that the ones that were on the planet with the worm and they had to survive like the droids for a while? Is that them? Echo was part of them, no, right? Boss Fixer, Scorch. Um, oh, who are they? Uh, I can't. I can't remember what. I can't remember exactly. Okay. No. Yeah, I have no uh, idea. I, the say, like, I, know, I know. I know. Delta Squad doesn't have like Cody or. Um, they don't have Cody or Rex. Rex nah. Or, uh, obviously not the Bad Batch. Um, right. No, they don't have Exo or Echo or. Um, fives uh man are you, know, you there's a there's a lot of them that they don't who know. is who is the named delta squad because i i can only think of the one iconic i i swear this is the only iconic version of the clone because we get the one episode of them where they're like working through the training like thing and they finally get through it and then there's like the one where a lot of them die but it's like the droids and they're like the one people at this outpost like a big scary worm monster Man, then what other squad do you want made? Whoever Delta Squad is, they're a bunch of losers. Because if it's not the ones I'm thinking of, I don't want them. Um, no, I, of course I would take any starter set they give us. It's weird to get a prequel and then a original yeah, I, trilogy starter set. Honestly, I would prefer I, a. I remember them, but I can't remember why. Or like I don't. I don't know understand. They were I don't know where these people are. Or were these the clones that were shooting each other? That is that what what episode they were in? It's been a minute since I've watched all of Clone, like two years. I know I watched it on Disney Plus though. I'm like a bad Star Wars fan, but like I've seen it. I just don't know who they are. Uh, Alex goes on to ask: the new WizKids D and D mini set includes super boosters. Would you like it if Hero Clicks brought back super boosters? What kinds of things would you want to see? And if they did, uh, I say this a lot every time we mention super boosters. Uh, a Green Lantern set where it is like there's like a giant yellow Green Lantern guy bring back the batteries you could bring back the entities make it huge and then my main thing is like you have people in their constructs similar to sinestro and his construct as a giant like two by two figure if guy gardner and his monster truck or his charger you have hal jordan and his jet plane whatever you have like don stewart and a crane because he's construction man uh you have kyle rayner in his big He does construction. I know he's a soldier, but he does construction. That's his job. Yes, he is. He's an architect. He's an architect. architect. Yeah. Yes, he is. Do the construction. Well, whatever, dude. Whatever, man. Don't build things. I don't know. Well, like that's what he would make, though. I mean, Lance, shut up. He also made like a stupid, like giant cosmic sniper rifle at one point. Which there, give him the giant cosmic sniper. That wouldn't even look good as a two by two. So you got a bad opinion. Uh, do, and then, of yeah. course, uh, Kyle Rayner and his uh, big old big old mech, Simon Bad. I don't know what Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz have made. That's, like, really big and cool, but something. Um, but, like, gone. also in that set, I've mentioned this, but, like, emotional spectrum shifting focus, where it's, like, instead of just playing, like, Green Lantern Guy Gardner, and then, like, the other ones are, like, red and whatever, instead it's, like, have them shift, like, have shifting focus be them changing through the emotional spectrum. Green Guy can shift to red, blue, pink. I think that's it for Guy pretty sure oh yellow i guess too when he stole sinestro's ring like that would be great and then like you know how jordan can shifting focus through all the ones he's been or all the one kyle has been or all the one john has been like that'd just be really cool shifting focus shifting through the spectrums uh sinestro could also do that like that would just be a really cool i think way to do shifting focus but that that's my dream super booster set it's like yeah. those two by twos you can add other dc characters of course parallax a big yeah but that's my dream like super booster set I would say I would like if we were gonna get two by twos for lanterns. I would like the entities to get their just like their yeah. justice done with a two by two. Big. I feel like Peanut Base did not do them justice, although the way they were used made a lot more sense as like possessors, uh, empowers, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't think D- so. D and D mini sets. I don't know if they've always had super boosters, but there's always they've always been like big enough to be two by twos. Not always, but like a lot of D and D mini sets have been big enough to be two by twos. Kind of depends on what you pull though, and which set they're talking about. But um, as far as Hero Clicks 
no like yeah war of light makes a ton of sense i think dc has been waiting long enough for a two by two set so like whatever that would consist of um personally if hero clicks brought back super boosters like hey how about we just slap dials on those D &D minis like they already have the sculpts let's just do that that that'd be fun i've done that they should do that right uh Yes, yes, that's, of course. No, I mean. that's my go-to answer usually, but um, as far as like Heroclix properties between Marvel and DC, I just want more vehicles. I want more things that are accessible on both sides of the game. I love combining things from DC with Marvel. I love combining things with Marvel from DC and like vice versa, whatever. Uh, Team and T, like all the like properties. I love shoving them all together. And so if I can. I don't know, like put Deadpool in the mystery machine with Shaggy and uh, have Scooby-Doo pilot the Thanos copter and uh, like, I don't know, just do all like the, the goofy stuff for no reason other than like the fact that I can do it. Um, that's what I want. So I would say do a DC set. We are missing some DC vehicles. We could use some back. Uh, that'd be cool. I don't think they want to bring back special terrain, but like it'd be cool if we had at least the vehicles coming back. And then, yeah, there's plenty of two by twos. Like, um, what is it? Oa, the Living Planet. It's not Ego. That's Marvel. But there's there's the Green Lantern Planet. I think it is Oa. Yeah. Yeah. He be a big dude. There's a couple things that like we're missing from like the DC side uh, as far as yeah giant colossal type stuff go. Atom Smasher. I don't think. Yeah, we have a two by two. Yeah, right make an atom smasher for Jay. Needs it. Can't live without it. We have the. I would. Atom, also, I would take a, the atom smasher. Yeah, we don't have the atom smasher. We don't have the blue guy. Blue and red guy. We got the um. We got black the black, yellow? black yellow tactical guy. <laughs> um, Adam. Yeah. Even though the atom is classically blue and red, I don't know why this atom isn't Wonders of the World. Who knows, man? I don't. I didn't read it. Um. Could be anything. I would, ah, oh, dude. Also, what would be really cool is a another green light with a box with an infinite number of boxes as a two oh, by yeah, two. Yeah, as a concept. That would look really sick. Yeah. With a red sun Superman inside of like. With oh Superman. yes, oh my gosh, or like make that somehow a team base. I don't know because obviously it was like a ton of lanterns, like a right. fleet of them doing it, um, or a duo fig somehow, you know, in like a different style. But I think you could get away with putting that many sculpts on it and then just saying well, insane barrier power. I don't know. It'd be cool. I would take it. It'd be so dope. Boxes I mean, and just a number of boxes, dude. Um, eight, like four squares of bar like barrier, but only for four squares or eight squares Ooh. if all of or, the are adjacent to an opposing character and the squares aren't removed at the end of your turn. Yeah. That? Okay, or, or like check this out. It takes like... You cannot use improved movement destroys blocking to move through them, and it takes four damage to destroy Ooh. the square instead of three. Yeah. And then, really like, maybe the screen. person in the middle has immobile to really crush their soul. I don't know. And it could maybe be, like, a plus 25 for each, like, to add each ability to that. Like, plus 25, your barrier markers have to can only be destroyed by someone with four damage or something, you know? You know, plus... 15 whatever they can't use improve movement destroys barrier or yeah destroys blocking to move through them like stuff like that that'd be oh that'd be so sick infinite number of boxes baby um but yeah don't yeah add some brainiac stuff in there the first, the first uh, <laughs> yeah Green lantern don't make them unique and don't make it a unique modifier so the first one it like increases the damage value required by one then the second sure. one can barrier as well increases it by another one and if you're <laughs> the third one if you're sinking like 300 points into this oh no then like suddenly he needs six damage six to damage. bust through these walls <laughs> he can only bust through one at a time oh gosh yeah yeah we fixed the game this is power. everyone we wants fixed... to play this <laughs> <We did it. laughs> uh all right let's let's um let's move on um does Matt's question count with the sword? Like, I think, I think we should mention it. it. Yeah. Okay, let's mention um, it. Sure. So uh, you can read it. Trait, plus five points. So speaking of the Ten of Swords set, with the new trait, plus five points can start equipped with any sword equipment. So does that mean you can start with the Black Necro Sword for five points? Um, so, of course, like the sword bearer trait in specific here is Wolverine. 
Uh, sword bearer, this character starts the game with any sword equipment equipped. And then it's a five-point trait. Optional trait, you don't have to pay the five points. Obviously, this is referring to the swords in Ten of Swords set. But so far, we have not seen that equipment listed as sword equipment. It's just listed as, like, object or special object. Um, now, maybe the back of the cards, because Scott did not flip over the card, the back of the card of the objects. Maybe the back of the card specifies they are That's sword equipment. Until we see it. something that says sword equipment... I've I've seen people online say like oh this just this trait just doesn't work. If you're a judge worth anything, you will rule it as swords from the set. That's obviously the intention. We don't need to get so nitpicky that we're ruining people's fun because yeah. words don't add up to what we think they should add up and like obviously and I will say this explicitly, obviously the intention is for swords in the set. Ten of Swords that you could use the equipment from the Ten of Swords set for these sword bearers. That's how the storyline goes. That's how the set is released. It's pretty obvious. So if you do play at a venue and your judge will not let you play this trait because there is no such thing as sword equipment, that is a bad judge and you should get them replaced or go to a better venue because that's sad. That being said, Matt's asking... If you can start with the necro, the black necro sword, the all black necro sword for five points, no, probably not. Uh, it'd be really funny. It'd be hilarious if like WizKids ruled it. Like, yes, it's called sword. It has sword in the like the word, but uh, no. In in truth, I'm assuming that the word sword, when it says any sword equipment, I think it should have just been like the set symbol. Any any, like, ex any yeah. ten of sword equipment equipped yeah. because all the equipment in this set are swords, uh, obviously. Yeah, but no, uh, it is something that like we'll it, it frustrates me online because I get it. High competitive level, we have to really like nitpick wording and stuff. But when it comes to casual play and casual venues, and it comes to people that judge at venues, yeah. it's fine to just interpret things the way that they are most likely interpreted. And if you can't figure out how this should be interpreted, I I can't help you. I really can't. Yeah. The set is called um, Ten of Swords, X of Swords, whatever. The equipment in the set are all swords, and it says they can start the game with a sword equipment. That yeah. This isn't a dig quit, at anyone. Quit trying to ruin the game, people. Yeah, it's just it's just like man, like if we if we constantly like nitpick to this level, then it's it's old. Yeah. This Dude. isn't Worlds. This is yeah. Thursday night. I just got off work. I'm trying to have fun. Let me play my Wolverine with a sword. Jeez. I'm paying five points instead of ten. Is it that big of a deal? Is it? Mm. Anyways. Uh, Chance goes on to ask, when is the Morbius gravity feed coming out? Um, When we're Morbin ready. All right. When we're Morbin ready. It's when it's Morbin, Morbin time. time. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite more um, time. And that's what Kamehameha waves for days as is like, you mean, when is it Morbin time? And it's like, it's not quite Morbin time yet, but when it is Morbin time is when the Morbius gravity yeah. feed will, yeah. will come out. If WizKids doesn't release a uh, gravity feed for the, the only Marvel movie that's seen two theater releases. I don't know. Okay, not the only, not the is only. It? No. Okay. Uh, I don't think so. Right. Didn't they, uh, probably read it brought end game back Empire. to the theaters after a while. Empire. Yeah. They... End game. Yeah. <laughs> end game. Yeah. They did bring end game. Back to the I think they're bringing Spider-Man back to the too in August. An extended cut for. Oh, it's cause it's got, um, it's got the morb in it. I think that's why. Oh dude. If they just oh. extend it to it's add just Morbid. extended with Jared Leto Morbin. What what if it's actually Sony just messing with people again, or they say it's Spider Man No Way Home extended cut, but then Morbius plays instead? <laughs> I would die. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. Yeah. Um, Murdoch is Brad again. I'm gonna stand by this. This is not worded like a question. All right. He says. <laughs> he says. This is a statement. This is a statement with a question mark at the end of it. I would like to see a Winter Soldier and Captain America duo cosplay with Simeon and Calder at Worlds. That is a statement, not a question. Now, if he said. Could I see a Winter Soldier and Captain America cosplay with Simeon Calder at Worlds? Then that's a question. I hate to be a WizKids rules lawyer here, or a, a HeroClix rules <laughs> lawyer, not WizKids. I hate to be picking apart Is your grammar. This sword but, but would 
But would is not a question word. It's like who, what, when, where, I why. I would like to... And so I'll, I'll read it how he said it. I would like to see a Winter Soldier and Cap duo cosplay with Simeon and Calder at Worlds. Hmm? <laughs> but that's not... Like, you're saying, you're reading Maybe it like I don't a question. Maybe I want to see that. Maybe but it's not. <laughs> but it's, Maybe it's really bad. But that's not how it should be worded. If it's a question, <laughs> it's, it's like, could I see one? Or will I see a Captain America uh, Winter Soldier duo? Yeah. That'd be good. I mean, if Simeon Palmer's still has the cap. hair. Uh, I've got I'd cap, have to be Winter yeah. Soldier. I'd have to be the, the White Wolf. Um, I yeah. absolutely will cut my arm off and get a robot arm if that's It's necessary. Optional. It's necessary, yeah. yeah. I would definitely prefer it to my current one. It's kind of... Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, I guess. Wait, is it your left arm? So it's the one with the black spots? The one with the burnt, crispy bits? Oh, no, that's that's too high. The they right arm? Like, cut off part of my car. Oh, true. To get that's... rid of that. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the burned black bits of my <laughs> upper shoulder. Uh, Cutting off too much. <clears throat> no, I just got two bad elbows and two good knees. Oh, your knees are good, though. Yeah, they're fine. I could probably sprint, like, I don't want to brag, but probably, like, 45 mile an hour if I had to chase, like, a terrorist in a van. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. Um, and then that is all for uh, questions this week. I, I had a blast answering them, guys. Podcast is long, though. Oh, boy. Look at that time. It's long. Um, Any... Final things, you know, we, we mentioned the subscriber giveaway for a thousand subs are running the race there. 99 away. Might might wait for like a thousand five just in case. Uh, just in case some people Make sure we're get tired clear. of content and want to. Oh, yeah, no. I don't know why they would. No, uh, But also, guys, you saw the skit videos that we did uh, before our unboxings. Or if you haven't yet, check them out. Uh, they're really funny. Um, obviously, if you have ideas for skits that you want to see, if you have ideas for videos, we love to hear them. There's a lot of really cool content coming soon and yeah. coming in the future. And I'm really excited for it. We have a, a fun uh Clicksbusters video coming. I don't know, yeah. I don't know how much I want to say many, about it. How but many we of you have uh remembered Clicksbusters? Uh last <laughs> one we did, the first one we did was about over a year ago. Uh, yeah, it's been a minute. But uh yeah, there's we've got another one filmed. It's been edited. We're just making some fine tuning and it'll probably be out about the time you hear this if not before probably honestly. around the time uh, yeah not sure if we're I'd still doing out. Endom Wars but Endom Wars might come back um, um, oh, okay sure actually what all we're doing I really I really want to do set battles guys I really want to do what are they called sub theme battles and it, we might bring that back in a form of Thursday Throwdown if there's interest for that let us know but I I really do want to bring that back yeah um, if you guys and, want oh, to see also, Thursday Throwdowns in person play or Ooh, yeah, like, and if you're still listening at this point, that is, if you're um, still listening, make sure you comment somewhere or message us somehow. But if you want to see Thursday Throwdown in person play, it'll be a lot slower turnaround time. Otherwise, oh, yeah. if you want to see it, um, on like Roll Twenty, we can do it pretty much whenever. Uh, when but obviously, it looks a lot lot worse on Roll Twenty. But yeah, we're, right. we're going to switch to just vote for a, the sub themes of the sets. Basically, because, yeah. It makes way more sense. We can definitely fill out like a specific point value with each sub theme. Uh, so like Disney Plus, for example, would be super easy to fill out like one of the sub themes. Um, and yeah, like the the previous votes, while they were fun and while we really enjoyed people's <laughs> takes on like what their favorite. I mean, we had were, some like five six hundred point games in there. Yeah, because there was, was so wild. many so many votes for so many different uh, variations on figures like some of those sets yeah. had 120 figures and we got half of those votes yeah it was it was absolutely wild um stay tuned guys on facebook if you've seen it a few times i am playing through both captain america sets the 2011 one and the 2021 the games have actually been kind of fun they've felt close for a while but then in the last like 20 minutes so far the new cap set has taken each one it's the the series is called power creep for a reason these sets are nine years apart one's got oreo dials one doesn't um i should tell you a lot but i've been having fun with it because i've owned both full sets for a while but i haven't played every figure on the sets so i i really just wanted to 
you know, make sure I play it. Obviously, this isn't giving every every figure their like do justice by building teams around them or whatever. But um, it's just fun to see. So I'm gonna play through all of the Captain America sets because it's something just that I have personally wanted to do. So check that out on Facebook, where you're kind of working on a way to make them a little easier to watch as well, so you can tell what's going on. But um, it, also the plan for this series is that you get to uh, tell me what to do. You tell me what actions you want me to take. I'm just going to kind of be taking actions as I go, but as soon as I see a comment that's like, hey, I think, you know, Mr. Immortal should punch Red Skull. It's like, okay, well, I'll move him up, and we'll try to get them, like, locked in battle. Um, really fun. Last night, we had uh, Mia Hill was going around challenging all the women on the other team for the for the championship belt. And then yeah. when she got beat by Wasp, eventually uh, Wasp had the belt, and then she she kept it through the rest of the game. So it was really funny um, seeing that happen. It was hilarious. So that was, was really fun. Yeah, um, the next one will be the the rares, and the old school Captain America set has some really solid rares. So I actually think if if the old school Cap set wins any thing, it's going to be the rares. Like bank shot Cap. Like wall shot cap, whatever you call them. Yep. Black Panther, Mister Immortal, uh, Crimson Dynamo with the eight range. Yep. Like out range. Crimson Dynamo. Stuff. Yep. Uh, Dark Star also with like eight range, but it's I mean, solid. Yeah, there's there's some really long dials. They're high point cost, but like there's some really long dials in those older sets. Yeah. In Cosmic Cube, a super adaptoid almost turned it when, around when a little play, bit. Uh, successful Dirk Anger. That's what I want to know. So that thing is like he's in LE, right? So there's only one LE from the main <laughs> Captain America set. So if we do play that game, it will be the old cap LEs absolutely curb stomping like Baron Zemo into the ground. <laughs> Just Baron because Zemo. there's like, well, he's the only LE, man. I don't know. Maybe we'll play him with all the primes and then it'll be slightly more fair because I've been I've been nixing all the primes from their sections, mostly because I didn't want Josiah X on the right. commons giving it's them all really, ignores yeah, penetrating really or like a, a ton of them though. ignores penetrating uh it would be really slow and painful um but yeah so maybe maybe i'll have all the primes and then Baron Zemo on a team versus all the le's to like balance it out a little bit and then i guess the starter set can go against gravity feed from captain america fun fact about captain america um we learn in and this will be the last thing I swear we'll, we'll let you guys go. But we learn in Incredible Hulk that there was originally supposed to be a Captain America Fast Forces for the 2011 set, but it didn't come out because the Winter Hulk has a specific revert. You are specifically supposed to revert Winter Hulk to the common 001 Bucky Cap from the Captain America set. But then it also says the 201 or like the 101 or whatever for the Captain America fast forces which like never came out so it's interesting that winter hulk still had that printing on his card um but yeah Seriously, fun fact captain fun america. zero clicks fact yeah fast force captain america zero zero two huh yeah zero zero two yeah and it's like nope like, so the thing i love about like the revert clicks um is like everything except for the fact that they name specific collector numbers i love yeah the that was rough that let you like the the jamie madrix that lets you bring in another multiple man, anyone named multiple man, Jamie Madrix, whatever, of lesser points from Wolverine and the X-Men. Really cool. All the other Madrixes and everything else, very specific about it. Um, not as fun. Not as cool. But you play them all at one. It's pretty fun. Uh, man, you know, we talked about a lot of like road jazz and a lot about like cap wolf and a lot about like Gabe Jones and successful Dirk anger today. Uh, but you know what? We also talked a lot about, uh, X of swords. And if you want to pick up some 10 of swords or maybe like, I don't know, uh, 20 of swords, which should be XX swords. You want to pick up like a, a case of swords or a brick of swords. You know where you can do that Calder. Or can the I do cool that? Coolstuffinc.com, the only place in the whole world that is named Coolstuffinc.com and also sells cases of hero clicks, um, at least to my knowledge. But yeah, you can you can pre-order some stuff. Obviously, uh, Ten of Swords is going to be not only a normal release brick and case set, 
normal set release. It's also going to be a standard organized play kit release. So there will be monthly play kits. And we don't know how exactly that will be released, but you should definitely check out your local game store when you check out those. But if you want some sweet deals, if you want that uh, dial V for 5% off, or sorry, for V% percent off, dial 5 for 5% 5 off code, you'll have to go to CoolStuffInc.com to get your discounts. And uh, yeah, you should check them out. It's CoolStuffInc.com. Betrayals. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trails.